January 5th edition of WZR Radio here on WZRonline.com. About 24 hours, just uh, short of 24 hours since uh, TNA Impact and Monday Night Raw went head-to-head last night. I'm Ryan Clark, going to be here for the next two hours talking basically about that, TNA versus WWE, and uh, your live phone calls as well. Live chat room, is uh, lots of people in there tonight, and uh, a lot of stuff planned for tonight. Impact spoilers, SmackDown spoilers, ECW spoilers, WWE Raw and Impact ratings as well. We uh, just got those before we uh, went on the air here, so we got a lot to talk about. Matty Boom. What's going on, brother? We do get the ratings, and that was interesting. I can't wait to get into that stuff. It's going to be... I don't know, we did the this, this special on, what, Sunday, right? Sunday night, yeah. right. And we did all the hype and the hoopla going into the show, and now it's over, and we get just as much to talk about as we did before it, you know? it's It was a yeah. it, it felt good last night, man. I, you know me, I'm not a huge wrestling fan of the current product, but last night I was I was back, man. I was all over the place. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a pretty crazy night. Ratings came out um, just a little bit ago, uh, right before we went on the air. I gotta tell you, man, going on the air here, I am, uh, I was so far behind on, I mean, it's been crazy, dude, with the amount of news between yesterday and today. It's been unbelievable. I just, I'm a clusterfuck over here, man. I just, died. a lot going on, and I'm not caught up, and we're going live, so if I sound like, I don't know, if I sound like I'm out of it for the next few minutes here, give, give me some slack, right? Cut me some slack. But um, so what's going on? What uh, I mean, what do you think overall? TNA versus WWE. I know uh, you tuned back and forth. I know you uh, caught the Bret Hart segment on Monday Night Raw. Segment. That's I caught the opener and the closing on Raw with Bret and Sean and Bret and Vince. And then mainly right. for the rest, I was on TNA. But I downloaded the TNA because I missed their two big things, which was the Hogan NWO, you know, Hall Nash, Waltman, Bischoff stuff uh, right at nine, and then the closing angle with Foley and, and Bischoff and the NWO backstage. So I, I, I got to rewatch that. So I'm pretty much caught up on everything, and that's a loaded question. What did I think of WWE versus TNA last night? I mean, you talking about, like, which show was better or business? What, what were you talking about? Um, well, I mean, which, uh, I, you, you, you had to do coverage for uh, Impact, right, yeah. I believe, for, uh, for your website, and... Uh, I mean, I, overall, I mean, Monday Night Raw. Watch more of which, which one oh, did you? I was on. Uh, I was on Impact. I had uh, two TVs going here, but one was in the other room. So when Brett, basically same thing as you. When Brett Vince was on, Brett Shaw was on. I was. Uh, I was kind of split in between because the way they did it, man, you knew they were going to do it this way. Where at the top of the hour, I mean, hour number one for Key and the Impact was was stacked. I mean, from eight to nine. You had, I mean, you had the Steel Asylum match was uh, a disaster. Um, the end. Yeah, of that. What, what happened there? What the hell was that at the end? I don't even know. I think it was supposed to be homicide. It was supposed to escape? climb to the top and and escape the cage, and he was unable to. Get yeah, I heard up. he got stuck up there, and they had to like change plans in the middle of the match and like help get him down or something. No, oh, no, he fell. He fell from the top. I think that was the angle. I mean, it seemed like that was the way it was booked, where. He was to the top of the cage, tried to get out, and couldn't get out, and then fell from the top of the cage, and that spot, none of the cameras caught it. So everybody was like, what, you know, what, <laughs> you know, what is going on here? And then there was a, uh, a very, very loud, uh, this is bullshit chant that uh, echoed. That was when, the, when they called for the bell, yeah. The, the fans didn't like the non-finish there. What? Right, right. Yeah, the, yeah. The, 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 the cussing from the fans last night, man, that, that really screwed up the show in a couple spots there for me. I mean, because it, it was like main stuff going on. Like, Jeff Hardy comes out, that's okay. You don't need to hear him because he wasn't talking. Right. Which we'll talk about in a second. I guess I spoiled that. But, um, like, later on when Hogan was doing a promo and even Bischoff, when he was doing a promo, they started cussing during that. And while they're talking... You know, still doing the promo, the crowd's chanting behind him with cuss words, so Spike TV is censoring every time they say, this is bold, this is... But they cuts out the goddamn microphones, too. I mean, it was well, cutting out Taz and Tanay and everybody. Yeah, there was one, uh, I, I think it was during... Was it during the Jeff Jarrett Hulk Hogan segment where Jeff Jarrett came out and cut that same old promo that we've seen how many yeah. times before, right? <laughs> I mean, we've seen that... So many times before. And Every time they reach up. a new milestone, Jeff Jarrett comes out and cuts that same exact pro- promo. Know, if they hit Spike TV or they sign Kurt Angle or Jim Cornette comes, or whoever, whatever big thing they got going on, Jeff Jarrett's got to retell the story about how, right. you know, the whole thing. 
uh, and how how he's so thankful for the fans and and thankful for this and and you guys nobody nobody thought we would last for six weeks we've heard that over and over. And it's and funny over. too because then Hulk Hogan comes out and just shits on him. I mean he he yeah. pretty much shoots a little bit. I mean he says. Yeah, you you got the company started, but you almost drove it into the ground within the first few months. And if Dixie Carter didn't buy it back, you know all that stuff. It was like, damn. <laughs> you know, uh, you know what? I mean, just today, um, basically based off his radio show today. I'm, uh, you know, I used to be a fan too of uh, of Bubba the Love Sponge. Oh, Bubba the Love Sponge. Who are we talking about? Yeah, Bubba the Love Sponge. I mean, this this guy. I mean, you said it best earlier that this guy thinks he's a little bit bigger than what he is. He thinks he's you know, more important than he is. Yeah, he thinks he's like one of the big. De- he's nothing. Like he's just a you know a jerk off that's going to give him a bunch of free promotion on his two radio shows. That's all he is. Yeah. Well, and not only that, I mean they're huge radio shows. No, no that's what I'm saying. It's free. That's all TNA looks at is that this, this fat guy's going to talk about our show every day on his radio and you know, two different shows, big shows, popular shows. Yeah, that's well, not, well here, here's the deal. Here's it's the, not like he's uh, some great talent that they want. Hogan wanted to do him a favor, and they knew right. he'd get a bunch of free plugs. Right, exactly. And here's the deal. While we're on the uh, while we're on the subject, and then we'll talk about. Uh, I mean, we're going to get into it. We're going to run down uh, TNA Impact Monday Night Raw from last night. Uh, I've got the ratings as well, which we're going to talk about here in just a few minutes. Have you seen the chat? I Jesus. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people in the chat. Let me uh, let me plug that real quick. WZROnline.com/slash/chat. Once again, WZROnline.com slash chat. You'll hear me say that a bunch of times throughout the night with the chat chat outs here and hour number two. It's going to take us forever. Yeah, you know, I want somebody in the chat room to count how many times he plugs the chat. I'm going to guess, I'm going to say 13, 16, I'm going to say 16 times we'll say it. Like somebody keep track and let me know at the end of the show how many times. Well, I think we just did two right there, right? Yeah, we've got two out of the way, so starting right. with two, you keep track. And we'll do a third one right here. Get to the live chat room. <laughs> you know, online.com slash chat. Lots and lots of people in there tonight. That's three baby dolls. Count from there. Um, all right, back to uh, back to Bubba the Love Sponge. And I know I want to talk about TNA Impact and Monday Night Raw um, first. But Bubba the Love Sponge, basically the deal is, if he came out, it was on, you said it was on Twitter, and then he, and then he came he was on the radio. Tweet, he was tweeting back and forth with Brooke Hogan all day, and he was explaining the story to her, and that's where that big quote came from, that you were, that with all the paid and blah, 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 that we talked about. Well, the, the basic gist of it is, he came on and said that TNA had contacted him and basically begged him to promote these passes, where he said that they issued him 1,500 tickets, right, 1,500 passes, tickets, to get into the TNA Impact Zone. First of all, the fucking Impact Zone only holds 1,100 people. So 1,500 people, there's no way that TNA would have told you or would have handed you 1,500 tickets or backstage passes, right? And then he says, then he says, I paid for it out of my own pocket. Paid for it? It's free to get into the Impact Zone on a weekly basis. They don't. I didn't know that until you told me, by the way. I had no idea. It, it's part of the admission to the park. When you yeah, I, I forgot. Yeah, I, I just uh, brain fart. So as far as as far as what he's saying, fifteen hundred tickets. No wait, okay. did he did he specifically say that? I mean, because fifteen hundred. I think he was talking about the the, the impact zone, but I mean, he didn't say that specifically. So could he have been talking about the parade the, the night before, like passes for that? Did they charge for that or what? Uh, uh, the, the party on Sunday night. I could see them begging him to promote the parade because they want they want like exactly. a big scene and and you know a giant you know crowd out there looking crazy you know but that's exactly where I'm going with it is, oh. is I I mean maybe there was a miscommunication of sorts where he thought that he had 1,500 tickets to give out to enter the show on Monday night where it was actually 1,500 tickets to get into the party that they held on the uh, on the Universal City Walk down there. Yeah. You know what I mean on. On Sunday night, so I don't, I don't know what the deal is, but obviously he's, uh, he's pissed off. He's, uh, threatened to quit the company unless he's issued an apology. He, uh, claimed that he went over. They set up a, uh, viewing party. Basically, it was, uh, I mean, listen, listen, if you've got, say, say you've got 1,100 seats, somebody in the chat room says it's been bumped up to about 1,500, 1,600 seats, which is probably, probably right, because they did, they did edit some stuff. Nonetheless, 1,500, 1,600 seats. What are you, what are you saying? I mean, what are you saying? That you got 1,500 tickets and you're basically saying, fuck off to all the TNA fans that are there on a weekly basis? 
come to see the show. None of those guys are going to be able to get in. It's going to be all Bubba's army that's that's able to get in. Can you yeah, I don't know what he. I mean, he's pretty much saying because he's confused. I mean, I don't know where the confusion yeah. exactly is. Yeah. I mean, we think it's the rally the night before, which makes sense. But I don't see how he could be so stupid that he wouldn't understand the difference between two different nights and two different things. But right. either way. If he did, let's just let's just go with the theory that okay, he did buy all those tickets out of his own money, even though they don't cost anything. Right. Let's say he did pack fifteen hundred to a building that only holds twelve or thirteen or whatever the amount is. Okay, let's say it holds fifteen hundred even. That means he's claiming that he bought every ticket in the building and sold out the arena with his own wallet. You know what I mean? Like exactly. Why, why would he, why would he think TNA would want fifteen hundred non TNA Bubble the Love Sponge fans in the building for their big show? I don't. It doesn't make any sense on any level. It makes absolutely no sense. And this is, I mean, this is his claims. You know what I mean? This is where I mean he goes out. I mean he was pissed on the uh, on the radio program earlier today. We should have uh, we should have got that downloaded so we could. You should have told me, man. I didn't know it was. On, I knew it was on the yeah. Twitter. I didn't know he made a big deal on the radio. But yeah, I got his uh, both of his radio shows. The I get the series. I guess basically what they did is you had what do they call it, the Bubba Army or whatever. Yeah, we the yep. WCR Army here, Bubba Army. We were before the Bubba Army too, and we're on radio, so technically we got a uh, <laughs> we got a beef with that too. BX no, Army, yeah. Bubba Army. We're the original Army for Christ's sake. 2002. What are we talking about? Yeah, baby, a long time ago, right? But uh, no, nonetheless, I mean, basically what happened is the Bubba Army showed up, and the and the TNA fan nation, TNA nation, whatever you want to call them, showed up, and the Bubba Army was told that all their their passes, or their tickets, whatever they had through the website, through Bubba's website, were invalid, and uh, that set off. I mean, they were pissed because fifteen hundred fans or seventeen hundred fans or something like that showed up. And uh, they they got pissed, and they set up a viewing party at the Hard Rock, which is on the uh, on the City Walk. So they piled everybody in there, and then at some point during the night, after uh, Bubba's segments were over, he walked over there, and I guess uh, people booed him, and somebody spit on him, and people <laughs> threw sh- people threw shit at him, and and this and that. Who knows? It seemed kind of a little bit far fetched to say somebody been on you, you know what I mean, I think Bubba, I mean, you know Bubba, dude, we played him on the pre-show before, where he's got a, I don't know, he's got a little bit of an ego, you know what I mean, as far as, uh, as far as, I, I, I like Bubba, I mean, I know what I you're did. saying, I like him, I, I think he's awesome, I think, I think he would have been good, in, he did good last night, like his segments where, you yeah, know, right. he was with the attacker and all that, like, I I liked it, he, he fit, he didn't, it wasn't like he was on there trying to go into business for himself, he was doing what he was right. told to do, it was very simple, it was good. Anybody could have done that, but okay, let's get Bubba to do it, and he'll plug the damn show on his radio. The, guy, the guy's never been in the pro, res- pro wrestling business before this. Well, he did. He, he did. Uh, he did uh, the celebrity championship wrestling for Hogan. Right. He did right. The announcing, and I think he he did that big. Uh, I forget what it was. They did like a big show. It wasn't the Australian tour where Hogan and like the Nasty Boys and all these guys were on the same card, and Bubba was part of that too. I remember. Right, right. I don't know. I mean, I, I I used to like the guy, and then that thing came out today where I just said, you know what, this guy is is way beyond his head. You know, way over his head. Yeah, I, they, I, we only got one good Bubba thing too, which was uh, my favorite Bubba segment was with the Nasty Boys the second time back uh, on the parking lot where they were trying to get in, security wouldn't let them, and then Bubba, oh. Bubba got to say his line. Is you know he always talks with the the wrestling lingo and all that stuff, and then and, you know like asshole comments. He said, you know who these guys are, kid, or something like that. Yeah, kid. The president of the champ here, buddy. You know, like all his normal talking lines, and then he like the funny thing was, you know, he pulled the security guy away from the door, and then he like turned around and told Nasty was like, go go get get in there, get in there. Yeah. You know, it was pretty cool. I liked it. it was all right, man. It was good. I mean, Bubba's uh, Bubba's. Uh, I, I'm not saying anything. Of this. Anything bad about what he did last night? I'm just saying that as far as demanding an apology from TNA, I mean, if I was TNA, obviously the guy's real close with Hulk Hogan, so you kind of you don't want to keep him happy because then that. Yeah, but apparently he was ignoring uh, he was ignoring text messages and calls from Hulk Hogan and Dixie Carter last night. That, um, he oh, is that what he said? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, apparently he walked over to the. Uh, to the Hard Rock and was booed out of the building, spit on, like I said, whatever, whatever he claims, and then uh, went back to the impact zone, packed his bags, and jetted out of there without saying goodbye to anybody, and I don't know, dude, you're not, wah. you're not, wah, dude, you're not Hulk Hogan, man, you're Bubba Love Sponge. I think it's funny, because I think, I think, I don't know what the hell is going on with that story, I mean, you know more than me, but it's, it sounds like Bubba, there's something, there's got to be some sort of legitimate legitimacy to this thing because he's not pissed off over a complete miscommunication there's no way he's that retarded that he would think 
he was getting 1,500 tickets for the arena when it, you know, he had to know at some point or another the really, you know. So my point is that I think he's finally he's been friends with Hogan forever. Hogan was his best man at his wedding. Blah 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 blah. But now that he's dealing with the wrestling version of Hulk Hogan, he's starting to see the politics and how he can get screwed right. over himself. Exactly. He probably thought he was above that because he was Hogan's friend, and I guess he's finding out Hogan when he comes to business is. A little bit different than Hogan on his goofy radio show, you know. Yeah, but the problem with that is, I, I don't know. I mean, we'll have to we'll have to wait and see. You know, I mean, he was supposed to be there tonight at the Impact tapings as well, and uh, they are currently taping the Impact tapings. I've got live spoilers um, that are ongoing right now. Um, it seems like there's there's a lot of intrigue into this mask masked wrestler that uh, attacker. Yeah, the guy that was attacking everybody. Last night on uh, on TNA, and uh, I can tell you guys that that was revealed, and and we noted this. Uh, I put it up on the website, and we came on here on WZR Radio that uh, Tomko was going to be revealed as the attacker, um, and that storyline was supposed to play out. Actually, wasn't supposed to happen until the Genesis pay per view in a few weeks from now, and then they did the uh, the attack storyline last night, and then in the main event, uh, the attacker came out and. Uh, as we noted, it was uh, supposed to be Tomko, and that was revealed a moment ago uh, before we came on the air. Yeah, you you revealed that guy a month and a half ago, two months ago. You had the right. the entire thing. You're gonna attack people backstage. You wouldn't know who he was. There was like a, a difference in the. We were supposed to see that he was bald. Right. We weren't supposed to know who it was, but we were supposed to know he was bald. I guess he went with the mask instead. But it was the exact same thing you said to a T. Yeah, it, uh, it was just revealed, like I said, moments ago, uh, right before we came on the air at the Impact Tapings, he uh, revealed himself as the attacker. So That's kind of a letdown, in my opinion. I mean, I know Tomko's a cool guy and everything, but who who gives a shit about Tomko? Like, why why would they make him such a big deal when they've got all this other stuff going on? Like, Tomko is the big attacker that everybody was waiting to see? Like, I heard people on the Internet talking about, you know, it was a big deal. They were wondering who it was. Yeah. I wonder if, I want, they're like, I'm wondering if it's Mr. Kennedy or Rob Van Dam, and then it's Tomko? Come on. Well, I I don't know about that. They never showed they never showed an attacker backstage last night, did they? Unless like no, he came out to the ring at one point though. Right, right. But the original plan was for Tomko to attack AJ Styles. And yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. happened. That's what happened in the main event. As far as the attacker storyline backstage, we never saw any sort of man man. So I don't know if if Tomko. Well, the, the guy that came out in the main event in the AJ match was he had the mask on. He was all, all black and he had a mask over his face. Right, right. But prior to that, in the backstage segments, you didn't see any attacker backstage. So that's saying there's two different attackers. Is that what you're well, saying? Or? Well, that may be something completely different because the original plan was supposed to be for Tomko to come out and attack AJ Styles under the mask, and the backstage thing may be somebody completely different. Could be somebody that's going to debut in the near future. I, I don't Why would they have two mystery attackers at the same time? That doesn't make any sense. Well, because the the angle with AJ and Tomko, or a, AJ and a masked attacker, yeah. has been going on for, for months. Oh, okay. Before. See, that's the thing. I, I haven't been watching, so I only know what happened last night. And what, you know. Right. I don't, oh. I don't know why. I don't know why he would have attacked numerous other people if he's going to do an angle with AJ Styles. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I haven't been I haven't been following the storyline, so I, I didn't even know that. So I yeah, guess. we'll uh, we'll try to get more info on that here in the uh, in the coming days. Let me uh, let me get some plugs out of the way because uh, I went off on Bubba. Number four. Uh, yeah, then we uh, then we got to get into TNA Impact and Monday Night Raw from last night. The ratings are in as well, which we're going to give you here in just a few short minutes. WZRonline.com slash chat Quattro. Quattro. Yeah. <laughs> WZRonline.com slash chat. Cinco. Cinco. <laughs> Don't go like past ten or all. Right, all right. <laughs> yeah, same here, same here. But uh, we'll give out the, uh, the live phone number here in just a little bit. We've got tons of people in the chat room tonight. So come on in there. We'll do chat shout outs here in just a little bit, like I said. And uh, live phone number here in just wow. a little bit. All right. We've got, well, what? I haven't checked the chat in a while. Yeah, it is filling up pretty damn insane again. Yeah, we've got the uh, the SmackDown and ECW taping tonight in Louisville, Kentucky. Right? I didn't check. I didn't know. I don't know. Yeah, I believe it's in uh, Louisville tonight. We've got a main event on SmackDown of Batista versus Rey Mysterio, and a main event on ECW tonight of CM Punk versus Mark Henry. CM Punk making a return to 
ECW. It's part of this ECW homecoming where uh, they're doing a tournament and uh, the winner goes on to face for the ECW championship. Yeah, I put the money um, in there, too. I don't know. Is Chavo always on ECW? Is that why that's not news? Um, he, he posted no, a tweet. No, he, he, on yeah, he put a, posted a tweet on his Twitter saying he was going to be at ECW and watch for him tonight, too. So. Yeah, Chavo does the, uh, the the weekly thing on Raw with uh, with Hornswoggle. Yeah, that's yeah. what I thought. So him being on ECW would be newsworthy. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's, uh, he's part of CM Punk and Chavo Guerrero are uh, the two guys that are coming back tonight for the homecoming. And Mark Henry. Mark Henry, right? He's not on ECW. Mark Henry as well. Yep, yep. Yeah, you're right. There you go. Um, what else? What else? We've got the TNA Impact taping tonight, which uh, is going to feature Hulk Hogan and uh, Scott Steiner. He's Steinberg. definitely going to be there again? Well, I believe so. Yeah, I didn't know how they were handling that. I guess so. This is the show being taped for this Thursday or next? Thursday? What's the uh, the uh, the uh, this Thursday show is going to be a uh, a, a replay. replay. Yeah. yeah. So this right. is for next Thursday. You know, and that'll be interesting too because the uh, the replay rating that comes out on Thursday night will be interesting to see when you can combine the number from last night. And then the number, well, you can't get, you obviously wouldn't get a, a good judgment of, of new fans that are just tuning in to Thursday's show if hadn't seen it, you know. I mean, so I would say, I'd say a solid percentage of the fans are going to do exactly what you're doing, which is watch the whole thing over again just because you missed bits and pieces of it from switching all night on Monday. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That's the, uh, that's the plan over here on Thursday night. But, uh, Scott Steiner is, uh, people were asking about him earlier today. He was, uh, backstage tapings last night wasn't used and uh, he's booked for an angle tonight they actually already shot it and uh, I'll let you know about that later when we run down full Smackdown or full Impact Smackdown ECW spoilers by the way guys um, the Young Bucks I can uh, give you a tidbit here they debuted on the TNA Impact tapings tonight against Jesus Motor City Machine Guns and they are under a new name which is Generation me. That's the Young Bucks or Motor City? That's the Young Bucks. Okay, I was going to say, why would they change Motor City? That would have been stupid. Yeah, well, I mean... They were attacked last night. I guess they're they're healthy and better already, you know? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, this doesn't air for another week, so I guess they, they've had time to go to the hospital and get fixed up from their beatdown last night. You know, that's another thing. Some of the angles on uh, on TNA last night didn't... Uh, I mean, one of the angles that really got me, and, and we'll talk about this more when... Uh, when we run down TNA Impact, but uh, they kept they kept showing this this motorcade right with with Hulk Hogan on the way to the arena right, and the motorcade comes in and he finally gets there right, and then he comes out to the arena and he cuts the promo <laughs> and he says and he says, listen brother, I've been in the back all day, I've been talking to the guys, we got a roster full of talent that out of that. Oh man. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. The entire okay. first hour was the limo finally coming to the building. Hogan's finally going <laughs> to arrive for the first time ever to the impact. And then he gets in the ring. I've been backstage all night, brother. Okay. <laughs> the first words out of his mouth, man. I've been backstage all night, brother. <laughs> uh, horrible. Horrible, oh, horrible, horrible. One well, oh, of the man. things that stood out to me, which is a very small thing, I don't even know if anybody else picked up. You might not have thought. You might have been on Raw. I don't know. But they were backstage, and Christy Hemme was going to interview Daniels. Right. And she asked Daniels something like, do you feel... I forget the exact wording, but basically, do you feel like you don't mean shit anymore because of all the things that are going on? And he started to go into his promo and literally got like three or four words out, and Jeremy Borash interrupted him, and they said, sorry, we got something more important going on, was basically the uh, thing. And it was like, God damn, that was ignorant as shit. What was the point of that? Just so he could have his no. face on TV, or was it really like, hey, let's fuck with this guy and tell him he doesn't mean shit on live TV? Yeah, right. <laughs> I didn't get that. That was weird. Yeah, I, Maybe because he's been threatening to quit. Know. They're like, all right, you want to quit? Here you go. Put you on TV and tell you how much you suck real quick. Yeah, I, I think I think anybody anybody that has a problem in that company right now, if you want out, they'll let you out right now. Because, I mean, listen, the amount of money that they spent, I mean, that we were talking about before we came on the air, to, uh, that's another thing. Is everybody says, oh, TNA should go to Monday nights. They drew uh, a decent rating. You know what I mean? Monday night every week. The cost to do a live production I mean, it's like half a million every week. Every and they would have to pay. They would have to. I mean, let's say Jeff Hardy was. I know he's not because I've, I've actually got news on this in the, in the file here. But right. let's just say, for the argument's sake, that Jeff Hardy, Ric Flair, Paul, and Waltman, those guys in particular, were just one-shot appearances. Right. Okay, so you don't have to pay them next week and everything like that. So if they want the money, but if you go to Monday, let alone two hours, if you go three hours. You're going to have to have a lot of talent, and Hogan's going to want to pick the talent, and he's going to want his guys in there. If they got room for the nasty boys, they got room for anybody. 
So you're going to have to be paying all these high-paid guys every single week and the, the production cost to do live shows every single week and the advertising dollars, which they spent a ton of for this past Monday. It's a lot of money. I mean, you can't just say, hey, oh, yeah. you did a good rating, go to Monday. It, it could work. I mean, you got to you got to calculate the risks involved because if you do go to Monday, you're pretty much saying we either win or we go out of business. You know what I mean? That, that, those are the only two options. You either eventually win or become very competitive or you go out of business because you're going to be spending too much, and if you don't make it back, then you can only take losses for so long. You know, you said if they got the uh, if they got the nasty boys in there, they've got money for anybody. Right? <laughs> if they got room thinking, for the nasty boys, they got room for I'm, anyone, man. I'm thinking, I'm thinking Orlando Jordan, dude, who they tried to make out to look like some. I mean, Mike Tenay on commentary was like, "Oh my God, it's Orlando Jordan." And I'm thinking, I heard you. You were going off about that. I didn't see what the thing was. I didn't even know who he was. First of all, like I thought, I thought Elijah Burke was Orlando Jordan for some reason. I, don't, I had him, I had him confused. And then you I'm were like, what? Orla- well, uh, I don't mean to cut you off, but I'll tell you what, man. The uh, Elijah Burke in that uh, in the Pope gimmick. Yeah. I mean, he was awesome. He was awesome. See, it's funny. Pope. So he's not gay. Elijah, Elijah Burke's not gay. See, not I could have. I swear to God, ever since he went to TNA, I thought he was the the black gay guy. I no, 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 that's Orlando Jordan. That's Orlando <laughs> Jordan. I had yeah. no clue. Yeah, I, had no, I, I, I could have sworn Elijah Burke was the gay one. I was like, oh, I have. How come nobody's making gay jokes? And then when Orlando was on last night, I heard all the gay jokes. I was like, oh. Oh, wrong guy. Oh, no, no, you can't have gay jokes. <laughs> you can't have gay jokes now, man. PETA or whatever the hell it is, be all over your head. Not oh, no, I'm talking guy. about on the Internet and in the chat rooms and stuff like that, the gay jokes. Like, I was wondering why nobody right. was mocking Elijah Burke. Everybody's shitting on Orlando <laughs> Jordan tonight. <laughs> yeah, Orlando Jordan, you know, and the Pope. Didn't he have those pictures show up online or something where he was, like, kissing a guy? What was he doing? Mm, kissing a guy. Yeah. yeah, or was he naked? Or There was some gay pictures that came out, I remember, and that's kind of how it was revealed. They've, uh, a quick impact spoiler, guys. They've announced, uh, and I don't know, I have it listed here as, uh, the Outsiders are, uh, set to return at TNA's Genesis pay-per-view. So that's not a, uh, a one-time deal last night as, uh... Well, you could tell the way they ended the show right, that they were right, going to be a big deal. Oh, yeah. No doubt. No doubt. Well, the ending of that show was, was Crow. I mean, basically, ending it, the ending of that show told you that the NWO was back under a new name. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I guess the thing is, where, is, where does Hogan stand will be the thing, which, which, which doesn't matter. I, I'm happy. I see a lot of people complaining that, like, Hall and Waltman and Nash are getting good time and good pushes, and I like it. Well, am I crazy? I like it. Well, uh, you know, it's just, I mean... I mean, it'll get old TV. quick, I'm sure, and in the ring it'll be a whole different story, but it's cool TV. I guess what I want. I want TV that grips my interest and makes me say, oh, I want to watch this, and they did it. Oh, no doubt, no doubt. I mean, Scott Hall, I mean, basically, the thing about Waltman... And I love he, that guy. He, he's, he's, like a 40, he's like a 45-year-old that tries to be an 18-year-old, you know what I mean? But hell, Waltman? But hell, when I'm 45 years old... I'll be trying to act like you know what I mean, dude. I'd say Waltman is a guy that looks like he's 18, sounds like he's 40, and thinks he's as tough <laughs> as a 50-year-old karate dojo master or something like that. Right. <laughs> You're a little shrimp, bro. And then, uh, and then Scott Hall, who um, you know, you never know with uh, Scott. He's always punch drunk. You know what I mean, dude. You never know if he did. You see his eyes last night. Listen, I was I was going to ask you. Okay. You think you think he was drunk or not? I don't know if he was drunk or on I'll pills or on weed or I don't know what he was on, but his eyes were gone, man. I can tell you that. I'll be honest with you. Well, there was one point in the uh, in the segment where Hogan made his debut where you saw Nash turn over to him and, and say something like, shut up, dude, or, or <laughs> go, go over here, dude. I mean, chill out for a minute. Yeah, there was a few times where Hall was interrupting Hogan. You could see Hogan kind of like swallow, like, come on, bro, what the fuck are you doing here, man? Right, let, me, yeah. let me finish. Let me finish, dude. Stop cutting me off. Exactly. But I, you know what? I would say, I mean, I've seen Scott Hall photos and, and videos of Scott Hall in, in way worse shape than that. Yeah, so I'll go, I mean, we'll say that that was the sober Scott Hall, you know what I mean? As no, you'll say that. I'm not saying that. Well, yeah, I, know too much, I know too much to know that when I looked at his eyes, there was something was going on there. <laughs> he wasn't just having a high C backstage before his second. Yeah, right. <laughs> 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 a nice tea backstage, no doubt. Yeah, but uh, nonetheless, we've got uh, the outsiders. They're going to be uh, they're going to be back at Genesis TNA Genesis. I don't know what they're going to call them. I don't. Obviously, not the outsider. I, no, I, I mean, can't. That's just in a report. But I would say they have to come up with a name, right? They can't. Or they could just say Nash Hall. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know the band. They could use the band. I guess that's a good name. The band. That's not bad. The band. Yeah. I hate the. I mean, Generation Me for the Young Bucks. Generation Me? 
Was, what was that tag team we heard? Uh, it was uh, the Bleacher Report said something like Jeff Hardy and Shannon Moore was going to be the Enigmatics, or what was it? The the, the Nig- it was Enigma, Enigma, but it was like a, Enigma Madness or something. Enigmadness, Enigmadness, or something like that. It was stupid as hell. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know yeah. if they're doing that or not either. But they, I mean, Jeff Hardy was there. They got their little contracts, and I guess the storyline with Jeff will be whether or not he's really coming. Although he is, so I no, I, uh, yeah, is he going to be on the tapings tonight? Do we know? Jeff Hardy, yeah. Well, he signed a contract with the company, so I would assume that all those guys, Rick Flair, Scott. Yeah, I would, I would assume they said stay uh, another night. Let's you know tape this thing. Yeah, but, yeah. Looks like the Nasty Boys. I mean, they are. Uh, looks like they're going to do a few with Team 3D because they. Uh, I mean, they trapped the locker room last night. Um, yeah, they, they mocked them for being in Japan on the biggest night. I think the biggest night, exactly, exactly. They lost the titles in Japan, by the way. Team 3D is. Did they? I didn't hear. Uh, I believe so. Yeah. Night. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna uh, we're gonna run down TNA. I mean, we're just we're just basically shooting the shit right now. But uh, we'll run it down from top to bottom here, guys. Get to our live chat room, wzronline.com slash chat. Looks like a lot of people came back Jeez, from uh, right. Sunday night, man. I know it's uh, it's crazy. A lot of people, and a lot of new people, which is uh, which is always good, guys. We're here every Tuesday night from seven to nine Eastern time. You can uh, get all the latest information, archives, if uh, you miss the show, at WZROnline.com. That's the official home of WZR Radio. What's our count now? That was six or seven? I didn't. I was, I was black. I the chat. do not know, man. Somebody, uh, somebody, somebody in the chat's keeping score. Don't worry. Somebody said yeah. five, but that's wrong. Uh, you hit five yeah. last time. We got two. Oh, Wayne D., our buddy Wayne in the chat, he gave, he gave us a name that they could use for uh, Nash and Waltman and Hall. He said they could call them the Old Siders. The old and he also took he, <laughs> like the old siders, and he said uh, Enigmadness was the tag team name that was rumored for Hardy and Moore. You know, I uh, I shouldn't say this um, right now, but uh, I heard a rumor earlier today, and obviously I I haven't put it up on the website. You've got a uh, we all know that that Matt Hardy and and Shannon Moore and Gregory Helms and and who's the guy of Shannon Moore, Jeff Hardy, Matt Hardy, all those guys that's on the Hardy show together. Da 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 da. I heard a rumor earlier today that Gregory Helms has requested his release from WWE. I shouldn't have said that live now. I did anyway. We're going to find out. Um, I'm going to look at ECW tonight, and we'll see if they bury him or uh, we'll see if they even use him on tonight's show. But that's interesting with Jeff Hardy and Shannon Moore headed to TNA Wrestling. It makes sense, too. I mean... Yeah, he's going to be a bigger deal on TNA than he would. But even if they don't use him that big in TNA, he would still be on their main show because they've only got one show, and he would be right. in the middle of you know the craziness there. Whereas on ECW, who a who cares about ECW, and b he's not even the main guy, you know. So right, right. We'll have to uh, we'll have to wait and see. But I'll uh, once we get ECW spoilers here in uh, where are they Kentucky? Uh, yeah, I believe I I think that's East Coast, but I'm not sure. But uh, nonetheless, we'll get uh, ECW spoilers and we'll be able to tell you a little bit more about, you know, how they use uh, Gregory Helms tonight at the uh, ECW tapings. But nonetheless, I heard a rumor today that uh, he had requested his release from WWE. So we'll, uh, we'll keep you posted on that. A little exclusive for you on WZR Radio. I'm I gotta gonna, get like uh, a, I gotta get like a sound clip or something like WZR exclusive or so every time you drop one of them <laughs> bombs on us, man. Right, no doubt, no doubt. Guys, wzronline.com slash chat. Ocho. Out the phone number. Is that Ocho? That's yes, number eight. <laughs> uh, we'll give out the, uh, the phone number here in just a little bit. And like I said earlier, guys, if you like what you hear tonight, if you like what you heard Sunday night, come back every Tuesday night, 7 to 9 Eastern Time, wzronline.com. Oh, yeah. Rob, baby, Rob. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> That's dog, <stuck>, dude. <laughs> um, all right, so here we go. Let's uh, run it down from top to bottom. We got the plugs out of the way, and uh, we'll run down TNA Impact Monday Night Raw, yeah. and then uh, no. I say we do it the other way around because TNA. We, we only got 25 minutes before the break. We could probably do Raw on that. There's no way we're getting through TNA in 25 minutes. Yeah, let's do it that way then. We'll do uh, with Monday Night Raw. Let's uh, let's kick it off. I to be honest, how much did you see? You only, I know you saw the Brett in the beginning, Brett at the end. Did you see anything else at all? Not much, man. I uh, I mean, I had it on in the other room, but I was I was pretty much glued to Spike TV. Yeah, I clicked over and I saw like a Hornswoggle segment, which was it sounds stupid, but it was actually funny because Santino came in dressed up as Chris Jericho and he was doing his impression of Jericho. 
yeah, and he was yeah, saying yeah. like all of you are hypocrites and like <laughs> just it was just, you'd have to see it you know I can't do it but it was yeah. funny and uh, I saw some of that and I switched back and then I saw a little bit of the Orton Kingston match but I, I was much more into the Styles Angle match that was going on at the same time. Uh, what else? I think that's all I saw. Let's, uh, let's start from the top, man, because I know you can run down this opening segment probably better than I can, because I was actually, I'll tell you what, man, 9 o'clock last night was, was crazy. I mean, you had the NWO, yeah. well, you had, you had Scott Hall, Sean Waltman, Kevin Nash, and Hulk Hogan all in the ring. Bischoff and himself. Bischoff. Yeah, he came Bischoff in. Bischoff as well. Yeah. He came in uh, later on. But uh, you had them in the ring, and then on Monday Night Raw, you had Bret Hart and, and Shawn Michaels in the ring. Right off the bat, uh, Bret Hart's new scene hits. He comes to the ring, he, he says a couple things for like a minute, minute and a half, two minutes, and then, boom, call Shawn out. It was beautiful. You know, you know, to Bret's credit, and I saw him at Ring of Honor, and I expected... I mean, when I came on last week, and I said, I'm really not interested in this in this Bret thing, and, and I... I, mean, I told you all along, the second his music hit on Raw, you'd be marking out goosebumps, the whole shit. Yeah, but it wasn't the original. Uh, there was something with the theme. It wasn't they, the they, theme. They, yeah, they updated it a little bit. I mean, it was the same uh, basic, you know, screech, guitar right. screech at the beginning. But, yeah, they, they, they changed it a little bit. In, in, his, in his defense, I thought he was going to come out in a tuxedo. And, and you know, what? he came out. and he, Brett, and don't he wear did, no tuxedo, bro. Come on. Well, uh, he did that uh, Ring of Honor. He, he did out. a Hall of Fame, too, but it just looked weird. I've never seen him in a tux before other than that. Right, right. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll give him credit because the mic work, even in the backstage segments, I caught a, a segment with him and Chris Jericho. Yeah, you know? yeah, I saw some of that, too. I didn't see all um, of it, some of it. Yeah, and, uh, I mean, his mic work last night was, was on par. I mean, it came off as, you know, he didn't... Maybe it was just me, but he didn't He didn't act nervous. He, I mean, it was... It flowed, it flowed well. You know what that's I mean? The same, that's the same bread as always been. Though. You just never really watched a whole lot of bread. But it wasn't it, that at Ray. It wasn't that at Ring of Honor. But then again, then that's again. Ring of Honor. That's a different. That's a whole different thing. A, he probably doesn't give a shit, and he doesn't care enough to try. You know what I mean? WWE, he's trying. He's giving. You know, he's doing his best, and that's what that's his best. It's the same as it's always been. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean. If he doesn't wrestle, I don't see what, what how how much I'm going to give a shit about him after like another week or two because right. you know he can, his promos they were oh, they were good for Bret Hart last night. Let's put it that they weren't amazing right. promos. I mean, a the subject material that they had to work with, he could have said three words and it still would have been awesome because the the magic the moment was already there. It wasn't right. really a matter of what they said. It was just for me just a picture, the image of seeing Bret Hart. You know, 12 years later, Shawn Michaels, 12 years later, staring at each other nose to nose on WWE television on a Raw ring. It was insane to me. Oh, I was yeah, like, is oh, this, yeah. I can't believe this is happening. Like, here they are looking at each other face to face. They're doing an angle about the screw job. I never expect. I never thought I would have seen it. It was just, it was a magical ass moment for me. Man. I loved it. Yeah, well, and I, I'm not but, but, but my point was real quick. After after they get past this initial screw job stuff. Right. Bret Hart's just going to be a regular guy, and he's not very good on the mic. So if he's talking about horn swaggle and you're going to get the same the horn shit, he's not bad. But it's not like you're going to tune in to see his promos as you would maybe Jericho or somebody that's like really good. You know? True, true, true. And another thing is, I mean, I call up Bret. I keep bringing up this Bret Ring of Honor thing when I saw him down at Ring of Honor, and uh, I've got photos where he's smoking a duck. Oh, <laughs> that's right. You never and put them online either, did you? No, not yet, but I still... How the fuck them. could you sit on photos like that and not put them online? Oh, man. I know. I know. Well, he was smoking a uh, a Dutch out in the back parking lot at Ring of Honor. So maybe the, <laughs> was it uh, a blunt? It was a blunt? Yes, a blunt? It would make, no, a big fat... <laughs> smoking a big, big burn, dude. Are you serious? So I'm thinking, I'm thinking maybe the promo at Ring of Honor. I don't know, maybe that crazy, funky shit. I don't know what he was smoking, dude. Maybe it fucked him up, you know what I mean? Came out and tried to cut a promo Jesus, I'm dizzy. You know what I mean, dude? It's just out of nowhere. Ring of Honor. I think you'll see. I think you'll see in a couple of weeks. It'll be the same thing you saw at Ring of Honor. Is maybe a little bit different because a, like I said, Ring of Honor. He doesn't care. He's not going to go out there and try. And there's nothing there for Ring of. Honor. He doesn't know anybody in Ring of. Honor. Was he going to talk about Kenny King or Kenny Omega or whoever the fuck they <laughs> yeah, got? Right. Like he doesn't know nothing. <laughs> WWE. He only knows. You know, the only people on the Raw roster that were there when he was there was right. Shawn Michaels, Triple H, and Mark Henry. That's and Jerry Lawler. That's it. Nobody else was even there. You know, on the Raw roster. Well, yeah, it was, uh, it, was, uh, it, was, uh, it was Mark Henry, Shawn Michaels, and, and Brett, right? And Triple and Jerry H. Lawler. Jerry Triple Lawler. H. Triple H. Right. Jerry Lawler, yeah. And uh, Michael Cole, I believe, yeah, he was there. So, But, yeah, other than that, I mean, that's it. So, but when, wow. he come, when they get past, the, the reason it was okay is because of the material, the screw job. 
and the fact that it's WWE and he's going to give it his best effort. Once to get past that, you're just going to see regular promos, and there's nothing exciting about a Bret Hart promo if he's not talking about like a monumental thing like the screw job. Right. You'll see it'll be very bland and boring, and if he's not wrestling, it's going to be hellacious. That's true. That's true. We'll see where they go. Let's uh, let's run it down, man, top to bottom. We got about 20 minutes to get through Raw. Then at about uh, eight o'clock Eastern time, we're going to take a quick commercial break. Come back in hour number two. We're going to talk about TNA Impact. Probably take us about a half an hour to do that, and then uh, we'll do chat shoutouts and. Your live phone calls for the final 30 minutes of the shindig. We're also going to have SmackDown, ECW, and Impact spoilers. I've got uh, ongoing Impact spoilers right now. Like I noted earlier, the Young Bucks debuted under a new name called Generation Me. Tomko was revealed as the masked attacker from last night who uh, attacked AJ Styles in the main event. And the outsiders, Scott Hall and Sean Waltman, are scheduled to... Or is it, no, is it Scott Hall and, uh... Scott, Scott Hall and Kevin Nash. Nash was the actual tag team. The Wolf Pack was all three of them. And, or you could call them the NWO. I'm, this, I'm sure they mean all three of them. No, I don't know. Yeah, that's at uh, TNA's Genesis pay-per-view coming up in uh, a few short weeks. So we'll, uh, we'll have full spoilers here in just a little bit. Why don't you uh, do the opening Brett segment, and then I'll kind of uh, fill in here throughout the rest of the show as uh, I caught bits and pieces. A lot of it, like I said, you really just had to see it. I mean, he came out, he, you know, he addressed the fact that he's been gone for 12 years and it's good to be back, and he actually remembered to say the WWE Universe a bunch, and and then Sean came out and it was just face to face, and they, I mean, they didn't say much of anything was the thing, but it was just such a fucking magical thing going on. Like basically, the basic just was it was like I want to put this behind me, you know. And Sean admitted that he was involved, and he said he wants to put it behind him too. They shook hands, and that was pretty much it. But it was so fucking cool if you watch it. Like, it was amazing. It was yeah, awesome. the hug. the hug that Sean gave him was... I mean, here, here's the thing about it is... And I haven't read either either of their books, but I've heard stories where they just absolutely trashed each other and in real life can't stand each other. And sure, they put it behind them, but it's a, I mean, think about it. If it's always going to be there. You know what I mean? You can put it behind you, you go out there, you can shake hands, you can hug each other. It's always going to be there. And there's some legit hatred according to both of their books. You know what I mean? Well, and I the books. I mean, that's a long... Everybody knows they don't like it. Even before... When they were in... The, before the screw job, they hated each other's guts. It was well known. So they actually had a... Uh, they had a big backstage fight where the, it was like supposedly the girliest fight all the wrestlers have ever seen where, like, Brett grabbed onto Sean's hair and wouldn't let go of his hair and just ripped out a big clump of his hair and they were, like, smacking each other and shit, like little pussies. So, I mean, they've hated each other forever, but... And, and the tension's always going to be there, like you said, but Sean is a different guy. Brett seems willing to put it behind him and try and put a different ending to the chapter of his career. Right. So as far as the TV's concerned, you know, it should be all right, but, like, the tension's always there. I, I kind of compare it to Shawn Michaels. When he came back, when he left, he had the reputation of being the biggest asshole, politic guy, etc., in the world And then when he came back He had found religion And he's supposedly The nicest guy ever But I guarantee you That old Shawn Michaels Is still in there somewhere Oh the same way, The same way Both of these guys Shawn and Brett Say they, you know, they're putting it Behind them It's still there You know If somebody stirs it up The right direction it, you know, it could overflow And explode again But I don't think it will Hey let me um, I don't I, We're getting off track here With um, with, with everything That's going on With the uh, TNA Impact tapings let me uh, let me give you a few more notes here, and then we'll get back into Monday Night Raw. Spoilers, guys. I know some of you guys in the uh, chat just got pissed off at me because I didn't warn you before we did spoilers. I'm going to do a couple spoilers right now if you don't want to hear them. This is for next week's TNA Impact telecast. Turn your speakers down for, I don't know, maybe one or two minutes here. I don't have much, but um, we've got uh, the six-sided ring is still there, and that's interesting because I had heard there was a rumor earlier today that the show tonight was going to end where basically the NWO, where they tore up the script last night on uh, Impact, they were going to come out and uh, tear apart the ring, basically destroy it into pieces as, uh, as the show were to end tonight. But I don't have that confirmed. Nonetheless, that makes uh, a lot of sense, too. I didn't hear anything about that, but that sounds exactly right to me. Yeah, the uh, six-sided ring is... Yeah, if they're getting uh, rid of it, that's the perfect way to do it, have the NWO go out and, like, like actually and, shoot and, and, and trash it. it. Exactly, yeah. just trash it and uh, basically rip it apart, and that would uh, that would end. I like it. So you'd you'd have it. Uh, you'd have it. You know, you've got the six sided ring for the two hour show next week, and then at the end of the show, bang, just dismantle the shit. Yeah, so it looks like the NWO is taking over and shooting and all that shit right. like they did in WCW, and they trashed it. I like it. I like it a lot. 
As I uh, as I noted earlier, the Young Bucks uh, debuted against the Motor City Machine Guns. Had to be a uh, really good match. They are now known as Generation Me. Angelina Love is uh, is sitting in the crowd right now as we speak. Don't know if there's an angle planned for later. Have they acknowledged so, uh, her, like on camera? Or? I don't have that. But I would assume so. They wouldn't know she's sitting in the crowd unless you know they put her on camera. Right. And one last note here is Bubba the Love Sponge is at the TV taping tonight, even after saying he would not appear without a personal apology from Dixie Carter. Maybe he got it. Who knows? Maybe he got it. And speaking of Dixie Carter, she commented on last night's TNA Impact rating, and she We haven't said, even revealed that yet, by the way. Yes, that's it. Well, we'll do that. We'll do, you know... That's what I was saying. Right we should after. save the ratings stuff after we run the shows down, because that's a big right. thing to rating. She, uh, basically, she said, thank you, thank you for helping TNA set a record ratings in every way last night. We all won. So she's, uh, she's thrilled with last night's TNA Impact rating, which we'll talk about here in just a little bit. More TNA Impact spoilers coming up in just a little bit. ECW and SmackDown spoilers. Probably most of ECW and part of SmackDown before we go off the air. 9 o'clock Eastern Time, and then you can go over to ProWrestlingScoops.com and get the rest of the live spoilers over there. All right, back to Monday yeah, Night Raw, that. Matty Boom. Yeah, after Brett and Sean in the ring, we went backstage, and uh, the, uh, Josh Matthews went up to Vince McMahon. Uh, he asked him if he heard Brett just called him out. Because after the, the Brett and Sean thing, Brett said, all right, now we got that one taken care of. I got one more piece of business I got to put behind me. And he called out Vince, and then Vince never came. And they just faded away to commercial. Right, we go backstage, right. and, and Josh Matthews asked Vince why he didn't go to the ring. He said he was in a meeting. He didn't hear Brett. And he said he'll come out on his own time, and he'll call out Brett later. So that was that. And there we went into, uh, obviously, we, we told the story on the Sunday special. I think we talked about it last week, too, because it happened on Tuesday last week. It was uh, Melina tore her ACL during a Tuesday, a rare uh, Raw Tuesday house show. And uh, it looks like she'll be out for six months. So they took the title off of her, and they started a, was an eight diva tournament um so the first round matches were last night, or at least one of them was, and uh, the Maurice defeated Brie Bella of the Bella Twins uh, to advance in that tournament. Uh, from there, the Miz... No, here, I, I, let me, uh, I, here's the thing about that, and I caught the end of that match, is they did the uh, switcheroo thing. Yeah, and they gave Brie Bella, yeah. Yeah, but I, that that made the Bella Twins look, look like Stupid. shit. Yeah, like they, yeah. they cheated and they still lost, you know. Yeah, they cheated and they, I mean, it made Maurice... Look like, look, I mean, they're pushing the shit out of her. Obviously, I would expect her to be the. Uh, she is so fucking hot. I swear to God. Now, oh now. man. And speaking it's of, insane. you're telling me Miz is Miz is fucking around with that? I'm telling you, the real oh. Miz. Oh, he is awesome, years. bro. He is awesome. Jeez. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> man, so, we, yeah, uh, but after uh, after that match, the Miz came out as she was walking up the ramp, and uh, he got in her face and like you know lovingly got in her face or egotistically got in her face and like was talking in French and you know all that crap out how she wants him and blah 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 right. blah. So that was that. Right, and then uh, what happened next? We had uh, MVP. The yeah, he said that he was Swagger. coming out. He was coming out because he was going to be on uh, commentary for this match, which was yeah. Wow, oh, that's right. Yeah, we had uh, Miz on commentary, and then we had MVP defeated Jack Swagger and Mark Henry. Um, didn't see this one, man, so I can't really comment much. I didn't it. either. He just hit his uh, he hit the playmaker on Jack Swagger, got the pin. That's that's all I saw. So gotcha. And then we uh, I saw this, man. We had a uh, Jerry show was backstage, and uh, basically Jericho says uh, he has a plan to get back on Monday Night Raw, and he's going to go talk to Bret Hart about that. Well, first he stressed about how they couldn't lose because the main event, or one of the main events, was going to be DX versus uh, Jericho, and if Jericho lost, Jericho's off Raw forever. Right. And Jericho was complaining to the Big Show, saying we can't lose, blah, 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 and then that, that's when he said he had the plan, he wanted to go see Bret. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, and, and then, then he met uh, up with Bret backstage. You probably saw more of this than I did. I called it, like, right at the end. Uh, well, they said that uh, they had known each other for uh, for a long time, and then something... The end of the segment came where some January 5th edition of WZR Radio here on WZROnline.com, about 24 hours, just uh, short of 24 hours, since uh, TNA Impact and Monday Night Raw went head-to-head last night. I'm Ryan Clark, going to be here for the next two hours talking basically about that, TNA versus WWE, and uh, your live phone calls as well. Live chat room, is uh, lots of people in there tonight, and uh, a lot of stuff planned for tonight. Impact spoilers, SmackDown spoilers, ECW spoilers, WWE Raw and Impact ratings as well. We uh, just got those before we uh, went on the air here, so we got a lot to talk about. Matty Boom. 
going on, brother? We do get the ratings, and that was interesting. I can't wait to get into that stuff. It's going to be, I don't know, we did the this, this special on, what, Sunday, right? Sunday night, yeah. right. And we did all the hype and the hoopla going into the show, and now it's over, and we get just as much to talk about as we did before it, you know. it's It was a, yeah. it, it felt good last night, man. I, you know me, I'm not a huge wrestling fan of the current product, but last night I was, I was back, man. I was all over the place. Yeah, it was uh, it was a pretty crazy night. Ratings came out um, just a little bit ago, uh, right before we went on the air. I gotta tell you, man, going on the air here, I am uh, I was so far behind on. I mean, it's been crazy, dude, with the amount of news between yesterday and today. It's been unbelievable. I just I'm a clusterfuck over here, man. I just died. Uh, lots going on, and I'm not caught up. And we're going live, so if I sound like I don't know if I sound like I'm out of it for the next few minutes here. Give, give me some slack, right? Cut me some slack. But um, so what's going on? What uh, I mean, what'd you think overall? TNA versus WWE. I know uh, you tuned back and forth. I know you uh, caught the Bret Hart segment on Monday Night Raw. Segment. That's I caught the opener and the closing on Raw with Bret and Sean and Bret and Vince. And then mainly right. for the rest, I was on TNA. But I downloaded. The TNA because I missed their two big things, which was the Hogan NWO, you know, Hall Nash, Waltman, Bischoff stuff, uh, right at nine, and then the closing angle with Foley and, and Bischoff and the NWO backstage. So I, I, I got to rewatch that. So I'm pretty much caught up on everything, and that's a loaded question. What did I think of WWE versus TNA last night? I mean, you talking about like which show was better or business? What, what were you talking about? Um, well, I mean, which, uh, I, you, you, you had to do coverage for, uh, Impact, right? Yeah. I believe for, uh, for your website, and, uh, I mean, I, overall, I mean, Monday Night Raw. Which one oh, did I, you? I was on, uh, I was on Impact. I had, uh, two TVs going here, but one was in the other room. So, when Brett, basically same thing as you, when Brett Vince was on, Brett Sean was on, I was, uh, I was kind of split in between because the way they did it, man, you knew they were going to do it this way, where at the top of the hour, I mean, hour number one for TNA Impact was, was stacked. I mean, from eight to nine, you had, I mean, you had the Steel Asylum match was uh, a disaster. Um, the end. Yeah, of that. What, what happened there? What the hell was that at the end? I don't even know. I think it was supposed to be homicide. It was supposed to escape? climb to the top and and escape the cage, and he was unable to. Yeah, I heard he got stuck up there, and they had to like change plans in the middle of the match and like help get him down or something. No, oh, no, he fell. He fell from the top. I think that was the angle. I mean, it seemed like that was the way it was booked, where. He was to the top of the cage, tried to get out, and couldn't get out, and then fell from the top of the cage, and that spot, none of the cameras caught it. So everybody was like, what, you know, what, <laughs> you know, what is going on here? And then there was a, uh, a very, very loud, uh, this is bullshit chant that uh, echoed. That was when, when they called for the bell, yeah. The, the fans didn't like the non-finish there. What? Right, right. Yeah, the, yeah. The, 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 the cussing from the fans last night, man, that, that really screwed up the show in a couple spots there for me. I mean, because it, it was like main stuff going on. Like, Jeff Hardy comes out, that's okay. You don't need to hear him because he wasn't talking. Right. Which we'll talk about in a second. I guess I spoiled that. But, um, like, later on when Hogan was doing a promo and even Bischoff, when he was doing a promo, they started cussing during that. And while they're talking... You know, still doing the promo, the crowd's chanting behind him with cuss words, so Spike TV is censoring every time they say, this is bold, this is, but they cut out the goddamn microphones, too. I mean, it was cutting out Taz and Panay and everybody. Yeah, there was one, uh, I I think it was during, was it during the Jeff Jarrett Hulk Hogan segment where Jeff Jarrett came out and cut that same old promo that we've seen how many times before, right? (laughs) I mean, we've seen that. So many times before. And Every time they reach a new milestone, Jeff Jarrett comes out and cuts that same exact pro- promo. Know, if they hit Spike TV or they sign Kurt Angle or Jim Cornette comes, whoever, whatever big thing they got going on, Jeff Jarrett's got to retell the story about how, right. you know, the whole thing. Uh, and how, how he's so thankful for the fans and, and thankful for this. And, and you guys, nobody, nobody thought we would last for six weeks. We've heard that over and over. And it's over. funny, too, because then Hulk Hogan comes out and just shits on him. I mean, he, he yeah. pretty much shoots a little bit. I mean, he says... Yeah, you you got the company started, but you almost drove it into the ground within the first few months. And if Dixie Carter didn't buy it back, you know all that stuff. It was like, damn. <laughs> you know, uh, you know what? I mean, just today, um, basically based off his radio show today. I'm, uh, you know, I used to be a fan too of uh, of Bubba the Love Sponge. Oh, Bubba the Love. Like, who are we talking about? Yeah, Bubba the Love. Sponge. I mean, this this guy. I mean, you said best earlier that this guy thinks he's a little bit bigger than what he is. 
He thinks he's you know, more important than he is. Yeah, he thinks he's like one of the big. De- he's nothing. Like he's just a you know a jerk off that's going to give him a bunch of free promotion on his two radio shows. That's all he is. Yeah. And not only that, I mean they're huge radio shows. No, no that's what I'm saying. It's free. That's all TNA looks at is that this, this fat guy's going to talk about our show every day on his radio and you know, two different shows, big shows, popular shows. Yeah, that's well, nice. Well, here's the deal. Here's it's not the, like he's some great talent that they want. Hogan wanted to do him a favor, and they knew right. he'd get a bunch of free plugs. Right, exactly. And here's the deal. While we're on the uh, while we're on the subject, and then we'll talk about. Uh, I mean, we're going to get into it. We're going to run down uh, TNA Impact Monday Night Raw from last night. Uh, I've got the ratings as well, which we're going to talk about here in just a few minutes. Have you seen the chat? I Jesus. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people in the chat. Let me uh, let me plug that real quick. WZROnline.com slash chat. Once again, WZROnline.com slash chat. You'll hear me say that a bunch of times throughout the night with the chat shout outs here and hour number two. It's gonna take us forever. Yeah, you know, I want somebody in the chat room to count how many times he plugs the chat. I'm gonna guess I'm gonna say thirteen six I'm gonna say sixteen times we'll say it. Like somebody keep track and let me know at the end of the show how many times. Well, I think we just did two right there, right? Yeah, we've got two out of the way, so starting right. with two, you keep track. And we'll do a third one right here. Get to the live chat room. <laughs> you know, online.com slash chat. Lots and lots of people in there tonight. That's three baby dolls. Count from there. Um, all right, back to uh, back to Bubba the Love Sponge. And I know I want to talk about TNA Impact and Monday Night Raw um, first. But Bubba the Love Sponge, basically the deal is, if he came out, it was on. You said it was on Twitter, and then he and then he, he came on the radio. Tweet, he was tweeting back and forth with Brooke Hogan all day, and he was explaining the story to her, and that's where that big quote came from that you were that with all the paid and blah 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 that we talked about. Well, the the basic gist of it is, he came on and said that TNA had contacted him and basically begged him to promote these passes, where he said that they issued him fifteen hundred tickets, right, fifteen hundred passes tickets to get into the TNA Impact Zone. First of all, the fucking Impact Zone only holds 1,100 people. So 1,500 people, there's no way that TNA would have told you or would have handed you 1,500 tickets or backstage passes, right? And then he says, then he says, I paid for it out of my own pocket. Paid for it? It's free to get into the Impact Zone on a weekly basis. They don't I didn't know that until you told me, by the way. I had no idea. It, it's part of the admission to the park. When you yeah, I, I forgot. Yeah, I, I just you know, brain fart. So as far as as far as what he's saying, 1,500 tickets. No, wait, okay. did, he, did he specifically say that? I mean, because I think he was talking about the, the, the impact zone, but, I mean, he didn't say that specifically. So could he have been talking about the parade the, the night before, like passes for that? Did they charge for that or what? Uh, uh, the, the party on Sunday night. I could see them begging him to promote the parade because they want they want like exactly. a big scene and and you know a giant you know exactly. crowd out there looking crazy you know but that's exactly where I'm going with it is, oh. is I I mean maybe there was a miscommunication of sorts where he thought that he had 1,500 tickets to give out to enter the show on Monday night where it was actually 1,500 tickets to get into the party that they held on the uh, on the Universal City Walk down there. Yeah. You know what I mean? On on Sunday night. So I don't I don't know what the deal is, but obviously he's uh, he's pissed off. He's uh, threatened to quit the company unless he's issued an apology. He uh, claimed he was an over. They set up a uh, viewing party. Basically... It was, I mean, listen, listen, if you've got, say, say you've got 1,100 seats, and somebody in the chat room says it's been bumped up to about 1,500, 1,600 seats, which is probably, probably right, because they did, they did edit some, yeah, we've got the, uh, the SmackDown and ECW taping tonight in Louisville, Kentucky, right? I didn't check, I didn't know, I don't know. Yeah, I believe it's in uh, Louisville tonight. We've got a main event on SmackDown of Batista versus Rey Mysterio, and a main event on ECW tonight of CM Punk versus Mark Henry. CM Punk making a return to ECW as part of this ECW Homecoming, where uh, they're doing a tournament, and uh, the winner goes on to face for the ECW Championship. Yeah, I put the note um, on there too. I don't. Is Chavo always on ECW? Is that why that's not news? Mm, he posted no, a tweet. No, he, on Raw. Yeah, he put a, posted a tweet on his Twitter saying he was going to be at ECW and watch for him tonight. So, yeah, Chavo does the uh, the the weekly thing on Raw with uh, with Hornswoggle. Yeah, that's what I thought. So him being on ECW would be newsworthy. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. He's uh, he's part of CM Punk and Chavo Guerrero are uh, the two guys that are coming back tonight for the homecoming. And Mark Henry, Mark Henry, right? He's not on ECW. Mark Henry as well. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. right. There you go. Um, what else? What else? We've got the TNA Impact taping tonight, which uh, is going to feature Hulk Hogan and uh, Scott. He's definitely going to be there again. Well, I believe so. Yeah, I didn't know how they were handling that. I guess so. This is the show being taped for this Thursday or next? Day? What, what's the uh, the the uh, this Thursday show is going to be a uh, a, a replay. replay. Yeah. yeah. So this right. is for next Thursday. You know, and that'll be interesting too because the uh, the replay rating that comes out on Thursday night will be interesting to see when you can combine the number from last night and then the number. Well, you can't get you obviously wouldn't get a, a good judgment of of new fans that are just tuning in to Thursday's show if hadn't seen it. You know, I mean, I would say I'd say a solid percentage of the fans are going to do exactly what you're doing, which is watch the whole thing over again just because you missed bits and pieces of it from switching all night on Monday. Exactly, exactly. That's the uh, that's the plan over here on Thursday night. But uh, Scott Steiner is. uh, People were asking about him earlier today. He was uh, backstage taping last night. Wasn't used, and uh, he's booked for an angle tonight. They actually already shot it, and uh, I'll let you know about that later when we run down full SmackDown. Or full impact SmackDown ECW spoiler. By the way, guys, um, the Young Bucks, I can uh, give you a tidbit here. They debuted on the TNA Impact tapings tonight against Jesus Motor City Machine Guns, and they are under a new name, which is Generation Me. That's the Young Bucks or Motor City? That's the Young Bucks. Okay, I was going to say, why would they change Motor City? That would have been stupid. Yeah, well, I mean... They were attacked last night. I guess they're they're healthy and better already, you know? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, this doesn't air for another week, so I guess they, they've had time to go to the hospital and get fixed up from their beatdown last night. You know, that's another thing. Some of the angles on uh, on TNA last night didn't... Uh, I mean, one of the angles that really got me, and, and we'll talk about this more when uh, when we run down TNA Impact, but... Uh, they kept they kept showing this this motorcade right with with Hulk Hogan on the <laughs> arena right and the motorcade comes in and he finally gets there right and then he comes out to the arena and he cuts the <laughs> promo and he says and he says listen brother I've been in the back all day I've been talking to the guys we got a roster full of talent that out of that oh man. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. The entire okay. first hour was the limo finally coming to the building. Hogan's finally going <laughs> to arrive for the first time ever to the Impact. And then he gets in the ring. I've been backstage all night, brother. Okay. <laughs> the first words out of his mouth, man. I've been backstage all night, brother. <laughs> uh, horrible. Horrible, oh, horrible, horrible. One well, oh, of the man. things that stood out to me, which is a very small thing, I don't even know if anybody else picked up. You might not have thought. You might have been on Raw. I don't know. But they were backstage, and Christy Hemme was going to interview Daniels. Right. And she asked Daniels something like, do you feel... I forget the exact wording, but it's basically, do you feel like you, you don't mean shit anymore because of all the things that are going on? And he started to go into his promo and literally got like three or four words out, and Jeremy Boresh interrupted him, and they said, sorry, we got something more important going on, was basically the uh, thing. And it was like, God damn, that was ignorant as shit. What was the point of that? Just so he could have his no. face on TV, or was it really like, hey, let's fuck with this guy and tell him he doesn't mean shit on live TV? Yeah, right. <laughs> I didn't get that. That was weird. Yeah, I, Maybe because he's been threatening to quit. They're like, all right, you want to quit? Here you go. Put you on TV and tell you how much you suck real quick. Well, I, I, I think I think anybody anybody that has a problem in that company right now, if you want out, they'll let you out right now. Because, I mean, listen, the amount of money that they spent, I mean, that we were talking about before we came on the air, to, uh, that's another thing. Is Everybody says, oh, TNA should go to Monday nights. They drew uh, a decent rating. You know what I mean? Monday night every week. The cost to do a live production I mean, it's like half a million every week. And they million. would have to pay. They would have to. I mean, let's say Jeff Hardy was. I know he's not because I've, I've actually got news on this in the, in the file here. But right. let's just say, for the argument's sake, that Jeff Hardy, Ric Flair, Paul, and Waltman, those guys in particular, were just one-shot appearances. Right. Okay, so you don't have to pay them next week and everything like that. So if they want the money, but if you go to Monday, let alone two hours, if you go three hours. You're going to have to have a lot of talent, and Hogan's going to want to pick the talent, and he's going to want his guys in there. If they got room for the nasty boys, they got room for anybody. Right. So you're going to have to be paying all these high-paid guys every single week and the, the production costs to do live shows every single week and the advertising dollars, which they spent a ton of for this past Monday. It's a lot of money. I mean, you can't just say, hey, oh, yeah. you did a good rating, go to Monday. It, it could work. I mean, you got to you got to calculate the risks involved because if you do go to Monday, you're pretty much saying – we either win or we go out of business. You know what I mean? That, that, those are the only two options. You either eventually win or become very competitive, 
or you go out of business because you're going to be spending too much, and if you don't make it back, then you can only take losses for so long. You know, you said if they got the uh, if they got the nasty boys in there, they've got money for anybody. Right? <laughs> if they got room thinking, for the nasty boys, they got room for I'm, anyone, man. I'm thinking, I'm thinking Orlando Jordan, dude, who they tried to make out to look like some. I mean, Mike Tenay on commentary was like, "Oh my God, it's Orlando Jordan." And I'm thinking, I heard you. You were going off about that. I didn't see what the thing was. I didn't even know who he was. First of all, like I thought, I thought Elijah Burke was Orlando Jordan for some reason. I don't. I had him. I had him confused. And then you I'll were like, what? Orla- well, uh, I don't mean to cut you off, but I'll tell you what, man. The uh, Elijah Burke in that uh, in the Pope gimmick. Yeah. I mean, he was awesome. He was awesome. See, it's funny. Life. So he's not gay. Elijah, Elijah Burke's not gay. See, not I could have. I swear to God, ever since he went to TNA, I thought he was the the black gay guy. No, 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 that's Orlando Jordan. Jordan. That's Orlando yeah. Jordan. I had yeah. no clue. Yeah, I, had, no, I, I, I could have sworn Elijah Burke was the gay one. I was like, oh, why have, how come nobody's making gay jokes? And then when Orlando was on last night, I heard all the gay jokes. I was like, oh, oh <laughs> wrong oh, guy. Oh, no, no, you can't have gay jokes. <laughs> you can't have gay jokes now, man. PETA or whatever the hell it is, be all over your head. Not oh, no, I'm talking now. about on the Internet and in the chat rooms and stuff like that, the gay jokes. Like, I was wondering why nobody was mocking Elijah Burke. Everybody's shitting on Orlando <laughs> Jordan tonight. <laughs> yeah, Orlando Jordan, you know, and the Pope. Didn't he have those pictures show up online or something where he was like, Kissing a guy. What was he doing? Mm, kissing a guy. Yeah. Yeah. Or was he naked? Or there was some gay pictures that came out. I remember, and that's kind of how it was revealed. They've uh, a quick impact spoiler, guys. They've announced. Uh, and I don't know. I have it listed here as uh, the Outsiders are uh, set to return at TNA's Genesis pay per view. So that's not a uh, a one time deal. Last night, as uh, well, you could, could tell the way they ended the show right, that they were going to be a big deal. Oh yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Well, the ending of that show was was Crow. I mean, basically, ending it, the ending of that show told you that the NWO was back under a new name. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I guess the thing is, where is where does Hogan stand? Will be the thing, which which, which doesn't matter. I, I'm happy. I see a lot of people complaining that like Hall and Waltman and Nash are getting good time and good pushes, and I like it. Well, am I crazy? I like it. Well, you know, it's just, I mean... I mean, it'll get old quick, I'm sure, and in the ring it'll be a whole different story, but it's cool TV. I guess what I want, I want TV that grips my interest and makes me say, I want to watch this, and they did it. Oh, no doubt, no doubt. I mean, Scott Hall, I mean, basically, the thing about Waltman... I love that guy. He's like a a 45-year-old that tries to be an 18-year-old, you know what I mean? But hell, when I'm 45 years old... I'll be trying to act like you know what I mean, dude. I'd say Waltman is a guy that looks like he's eighteen, sounds like he's forty, and thinks he's as tough as a fifty year old karate dojo master or something like that. Right. You're a little shrimp, bro. And then uh and then Scott Hall, who um you know, you never know with uh Scott he's always punch drunk. You know what I mean, dude? You never know if he's Did you see his eyes last night? Listen, I was I was gonna ask you. Okay. You think you think he was drunk or not? I don't know if he was drunk or on I'll pills or uh, on weed or I don't know what he was on, but his eyes were gone, man. I can tell you that. I'll be honest with you. Well, there was one point in the uh, in the segment where Hogan made his debut where you saw Nash turn over to him and, and say something like, shut up, dude, or, or <laughs> go, go over here, dude. I mean, chill out for a minute. Yeah, there was a few times where Hall was interrupting Hogan. You could see Hogan kind of like swallow, like, come on, bro, what the fuck are you doing here, man? Right, let, me, yeah. let me finish. Let me finish, dude. Stop cutting me off. Exactly. But I, you know what? I would say, I mean, I've seen Scott Hall photos and, and videos of Scott Hall in, in way worse shape than that. Yeah, so I'll go, I mean, we'll say that that was the sober Scott Hall, you know what I mean? As no, you'll say that. I'm not saying that. Yeah, I know too much it's... I know too much to know that when I looked at his eyes, there was something was going on there. <laughs> he wasn't just having a high C backstage before his second. Yeah, right. <laughs> 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 a nice tea backstage, no doubt. Yeah, but uh, nonetheless, we've got uh, the Outsiders. They're going to be uh, they're going to be back at Genesis TNA Genesis. Paper. I don't know what they're going to call them. I don't. Uh, obviously, not the Outsiders. No, I, I, I mean, can't. That's just in a report. But I would say they have to come up with a name, right? They can't. Or they could just say Nash Hall. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know the band. They could use the band. I guess that's a good name. The band. That's not bad. The band. Yeah. I hate the name. I mean, Generation Me for the Young Bucks. Generation me? What was that tag team we heard? Uh, it was uh, the Bleacher Report said something like Jeff Hardy and Shannon Moore was going to be the Enigmatics or what was it? The the Enig- it was Enigma, Enigma, but it was like Enigma Madness or something. Enigmadness, Enigmadness, or something like that. It was stupid as hell. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know yeah. if they're doing that or not either. But they, I mean, Jeff Hardy was there. They got their little contracts, and I guess the storyline with Jeff will be whether or not he's really coming. Although he is, so. You know, I, uh, is he going to be on the tapings tonight? Do we know? 
Jeff Hardy, yeah. Well, he signed a contract with the company, so I would assume that all those guys, Ric Flair, Scott. Yeah, I would, I would assume they said, stay uh, another night, let's, you know, tape this thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah it looks like the Nasty Boys. I mean, they are, uh, looks like they're going to do a few with Team 3D because they, uh, I mean, they trapped the locker room last night. Um, yeah, the they mocked them for being in Japan on the biggest night. Right, the biggest night. Exactly, exactly. They lost the titles in Japan, by the way, Team 3D, they did they? I didn't hear. Uh, I believe so. Yeah. That. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna uh, we're gonna run down TNA. I mean, we're just we're just basically shooting the shit right now. But uh, we'll run it down from top to bottom here, guys. Get to our live chat room, wzronline.com slash chat. Looks like a lot of people came back Jeez, from uh, right. Sunday night, man. I know it's uh, it's crazy. A lot of people, a lot of new people, which is uh, which is always good, guys. We're here every Tuesday night from seven to nine Eastern time. You can uh, get all the latest information, archives, if uh, you miss a show, at WZROnline.com. That's the official home of WZR Radio. What's our count now? That was six or seven? I didn't. I was, I was black. I the chat. do not know, man. Somebody, uh, somebody, somebody in the chat's account. keeping score. Don't worry. Somebody said five, but that's wrong. Uh, you hit five man. last time. We got two. Oh, Wayne D., our buddy Wayne in the chat. He gave, he gave us a name that they could use for uh, Nash and Waltman and Hall. He said they could call them the Old Siders. The and he also t- <laughs> he, like the old siders, and he said uh, Enig Madness was the tag team name that was rumored for Hardy and Moore. You know, I uh, I shouldn't say this um, right now, but uh, I heard a rumor earlier today, and obviously I I haven't put it up on the website. You've got a. Uh, we all know that that Matt Hardy and and Shannon Moore and Gregory Helms and and who's the guy of Shannon Moore, Jeff Hardy, Matt Hardy, all those guys that's on the Hardy show together. Da 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 da. da. I heard a rumor earlier today that Gregory Helms has requested his release from WWE. I shouldn't have said that live now. I did anyway. We're going to find out. Um, I'm going to look at ECW tonight, and we'll see if they bury him or uh, we'll see if they even use him on tonight's show. But that's interesting with Jeff Hardy and Shannon Moore headed to TNA Wrestling. It makes sense, too. I mean... Yeah, he's gonna be a bigger deal on TNA than he would. But even if they don't use him that big in TNA, he would still be on their main show because they've only got one show, and he would be right. in the middle of you know the craziness there. Whereas on ECW, who, a who cares about ECW, and b he's not even the main guy, you know. So right, right. We'll have to uh, we'll have to wait and see. But I'll uh, once we get ECW spoilers here in uh, where are they? Kentucky? Uh, yeah, I believe I I think that's East Coast, but I'm not sure. But uh, nonetheless, we'll get uh, ECW spoilers and we'll be able to tell you a little bit more about, you know, how they use uh, Gregory Helms tonight at the uh, ECW tapings. But nonetheless, I heard a rumor today that uh, he had requested his release from WWE. So we'll uh, we'll keep you posted on that. A little exclusive for you on WZR Radio. I'm I gotta get like a I gotta get like a sound clip or something like WZR exclusive or so every time you drop one of them <laughs> bombs on us, man. Right, no doubt, no doubt. Guys, WZROnline.com slash chat. Ocho. We'll the phone number. Is that Ocho? That's number eight. <laughs> uh, we'll give out the, uh, the phone number here in just a little bit. And like I said earlier, guys, if you like what you hear tonight, if you like what you heard Sunday night, come back every Tuesday night, 7 to 9 Eastern Time, WZROnline.com. Oh, yeah. Love, baby, love. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> That's <us> talk, dude. <laughs> um, all right, so here we go. Let's uh, run it down from top to bottom. We got the plugs out of the way, and uh, we'll run down TNA Impact Monday Night Raw, and then uh, I know. I say we do it the other way around because TNA. We, we only got 25 minutes before the break. We could probably do Raw on that. There's no way we're getting through TNA in 25 minutes. Yeah, let's do it that way then. We'll do, uh, we'll do Monday Night Raw. Let's uh, let's kick it off. I to be honest. How much did you see? You only, I know you saw the bread in the beginning, bread at the end. Did you see anything else at all? Not much, man. I uh, I mean, I had it on in the other room, but I was I was pretty much glued to Spike TV. Yeah, I clicked over and I saw like a Hornswoggle segment, which was it sounds stupid, but it was actually funny because Santino came in dressed up as Chris Jericho and he was doing his impression of Jericho, yeah, and he was yeah, saying yeah. like, "All of you are hypocrites," and like <laughs> just it was like, you'd have to see it, you know. I can't do it, but it was yeah. funny, and uh, I saw some of that, and I switched back, and then I saw a little bit of the Orton Kingston match, but. I was much more into the style of the angle match that was going on at the same time. 
Uh, what else? I think that's all I saw. Let's, uh, let's start from the top, man, because I know you can run down this opening segment probably better than I can, because I was actually, I'll tell you what, man, 9 o'clock last night was, was crazy. I mean, you had the NWO, yeah. well, you had, you had Scott Hall, Sean Waltman, Kevin Nash, and Hulk Hogan all in the ring. Bischoff and himself. Bischoff. Yeah, he came Bischoff in. as yeah. well. He came in uh, later on. But uh, you had them in the ring, and then on Monday Night Raw, you had Bret Hart and, and Shawn Michaels in the ring. Right off the and, bat, uh, Bret Hart's new theme hits. He comes to the ring, he, he says a couple things for like a minute, minute and a half, two minutes, and then, boom, call Shawn out. It was beautiful. You know, you know, to Bret's credit, and I saw him at Ring of Honor, and I expected... I mean, when I came on last week, and I said, I'm really not interested in this in this Bret thing, and, and I... I told you all along, the second his music hit on Raw, you'd be marking out goosebumps, the whole shit. Yeah, but it wasn't the original. Uh, there was something with the theme. It wasn't they, the theme. They, they, yeah, they updated it a little bit. I mean, it was the same right. basic, you know, screech, guitar right. screech at the beginning. But, yeah, they, they, they changed it a little bit. In, in, like, his, in his defense, I thought he was going to come out in a tuxedo. And, and you know, what? he came out and he... Brett, and don't wear no tuxedo, bro. Come on. Well, I did that uh, Ring of Honor. He, he did a Hall of Fame, too, but it just looked weird. I've never seen him in a tux before other than that. Right, right. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll give him credit because the mic work, even in the backstage segments, I caught a, a segment with him and Chris Jericho. Yeah, you know? yeah, I saw some of that, too. I didn't see all um, of it, some of it. Yeah, and, uh, I mean, his mic work last night was, was on par. I mean, it came off as, you know, he didn't... Maybe it was just me, but he didn't He didn't act nervous. He, I mean, it was. It flowed. it flowed well. You know what that's I mean? The same, that's the same bread it's always been. Though. You just never really watched a whole lot of bread. But it wasn't it, that it, at Ray. It wasn't that at Ring of Honor. But then again, then that's again. That's Ring of Honor. That's a different. That's a whole different thing. A, he probably doesn't give a shit, and he doesn't care enough to try. You know what I mean? WWE, he's trying. He's giving. You know, he's doing his best, and that's what that's his best. It's the same as it's always been. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, if he doesn't wrestle, I don't see what, what how how much I'm going to give a shit about him after like another week or two because right. you know he can, his promos. They were oh, they were good for Bret Hart last night. Let's put it that they weren't amazing promos. I mean, a the subject material that they had to work with, he could have said three words and it still would have been awesome because the the magic, the moment was already there. It wasn't really a matter of what they said. It was just for me, just a picture, the image of seeing Bret Hart, you know, twelve years later, Shawn Michaels, twelve years later, staring at each other nose to nose on WWE television on a Raw. It was insane to me. I was oh, like, yeah. is this, oh, yeah. I can't believe this is happening. Like. Here they are looking at each other face to face. They're doing an angle about the screw job. I never expect. I never thought I would have seen it. It was just. It was a magical ass moment for me. Man. I loved it. Yeah. Well, and I, I love. But, but, but my point was real quick. After after they get past this initial screw job stuff, right. Bret Hart's just going to be a regular guy, and he's not very good on the mic. So if you're talking about horn swaggle and you're going to be saying boring shit. He's not bad, but it's not like you're going to tune in to see his promos as you would maybe Jericho or somebody that's like really good. You know. True. True, true. And another thing is, I mean, I call up Brett. I keep bringing up this Brett Ring of Honor thing when I saw him down at Ring of Honor. And uh, I've got photos where he's smoking a duck. Oh, that's it. right. You never and put then, them online either, did you? No, not yet, but I still How the them. fuck could you sit on photos like that and not put them online? Oh, man. I know. I know. Well, he was smoking a uh, a Dutch out in the back parking lot at Ring of Honor. So maybe the, <laughs> was it uh, a blunt? It was a blunt? Yes, yeah, it would make, No, a big fat... <laughs> smoking a big burn, dude. Are you serious? <laughs> So I'm thinking, I'm thinking maybe the promo or Ring of Honor. I don't know, maybe that crazy funky shit. I don't know what he was smoking, dude. Maybe it fucked him up. You know what I mean? Came out and tried to cut a promo and said, "Jesus, I'm dizzy." You know what I mean, dude? It's just I don't know. The Ring of Honor. I think you'll see. I think you'll see in a couple of weeks. It'll be the same thing you saw at Ring of Honor. Is maybe a little bit different because a, like I said, the Ring of Honor. He doesn't care. He's not going to go out there. And- and there's nothing there for Ring of Honor. He doesn't know anybody in Ring of Honor. Was he going to talk about Kenny King or Kenny Omega or whoever the fuck they yeah, got? Right. Like, he doesn't know nothing. <laughs> WWE, he only knows, you know, the only people on the Raw roster that were there when he was there was right. Shawn Michaels, Triple H, and Mark Henry. That's, and Jerry Lawler. That's it. Nobody else was even there, you know, on the Raw roster. Well, yeah, it, was, uh, stuff, it, was, uh, it, was, uh, it was Mark Henry, Shawn Michaels, and, and Brett, right? And Triple and Jerry H. Lawler. Jerry Triple Lawler, H, Triple H, right. Jerry Lawler, yeah. And uh, Michael Cole, uh, yeah, he was there, so... But yeah, other than that, I mean that's it. So, but wow. when he come, when they get past the, the reason it was okay is because of the material, the screw job, and right. the fact that it's WWE and he's going to give it his best effort. Right. Once to get past that, you're just going to see regular promos, and there's nothing exciting about a Bret Hart promo if he's not talking about like a monumental thing like the screw job. Right. You'll see it'll be very bland and boring, and if he's not wrestling, it's going to be hellacious. 
That's true. That's true. We'll see where they go. Let's uh, let's run them down, man, top to bottom. We've got about 20 minutes to get through Raw. Then at about uh, 8 o'clock Eastern time, we're going to take a quick commercial break, come back. In hour number two, we're going to talk about TNA Impact. Probably take us about a half an hour to do that. And then uh, we'll do chat shout-outs and your live phone calls for the final 30 minutes of the shindig. We're also going to have SmackDown, ECW, and Impact spoilers. I've got a... Uh, Ongoing Impact spoilers right now. Like I noted earlier, the Young Bucks debuted under a new name called Generation Me. Tomko was revealed as the masked attacker from last night who uh, attacked AJ Styles in the main event. And the outsiders, Scott Hall and Sean Waltman, are scheduled to... Or is it... No, is it Scott Hall and... uh Scott Hall and Kevin Nash was the actual tag team. The Wolf Pack was all three of them, and or you could call them the NWO. I'm, this, I'm sure they mean all three of them. Though. I don't know. Yeah, that's at uh, TNA's Genesis pay per view coming up in uh, a few short weeks. So we'll uh, we'll have full spoilers here in just a little bit. Why don't you uh, do the opening Brett segment, and then I'll kind of uh, fill in here throughout the rest of the show as uh, I caught bits and pieces. A lot of it, like I said, you really just had to see it. I mean, he came out. He, you know, he addressed the fact that he's been gone for 12 years and it's good to be back. And he actually remembered to say the WWE Universe a bunch. And and then Sean came out and it was just face to face. And they, I mean, they didn't say much of anything was the thing, but it was just such a fucking magical thing going on. Like basically, the basic just was it was like I want to put this behind me. You know, and Sean admitted that he was involved, and he said he wants to put it behind him too. They shook hands, and that was pretty much it. But it was so fucking cool if you watch it. Like it was amazing. It was yeah, awesome. the hug the hug that Sean gave him was I mean, here here's the thing about it is and I haven't read either either of their books, but I've heard stories where they just absolutely trashed each other and in real life can't stand each other. And sure, they put it behind them, but it's a I mean, think about it. It's very it's always gonna be there. You know what I mean? You can put it behind you, you can go out there, you can shake hands, you can hug each other. It's always gonna be there. And there's some legit hatred according to both of their books. You know, well, and I the books. I mean, that's a long. Everybody knows they don't like it. Even before, but when they were in the, before the screw job, they hated each other's guts. It was well known. So they actually had a uh, they had a big backstage fight where the it was like supposedly the girliest fight all the wrestlers have ever seen, where like Brett grabbed onto Sean's hair and wouldn't let go of his hair and just ripped out a big clump of his hair and they were like smacking each other and shit like little pussies. So I mean, they've hated each other forever, but and, and the tension's always going to be there, like you said. But Sean is a different guy. Brett seems willing to put it behind him and try and put a different ending to the chapter of his career. Right. So as far as the TV is concerned, you know, it should be all right. But, like, the tension's always there. I, I kind of compare it to Shawn Michaels. When he came back, when he left, he had the reputation of being the biggest asshole, politic guy, et cetera, in the world. And then when he came back, he had found religion, and he's supposedly the nicest guy ever. But I guarantee you that old Shawn Michaels is still in there somewhere. Oh, the same, way, the same way both of these guys, Shawn and Brett, say they, you know, they're putting it behind him. It's still there. You know, if somebody stirs it up the right direction, it you know it could overflow and explode again. But I don't think it will. Hey, let me. Um, I don't. I, we're getting off track here with um, with with everything that's going on with the uh, TNA Impact tapings. Let me uh, let me give you a few more notes here, and then we'll get back into Monday Night Raw. Spoilers, guys. I know some of you guys in the uh, chat just got pissed off at me because I didn't warn you before we did spoilers. They do a couple spoilers right now if you don't want to hear them. This is for next week's TNA Impact telecast. Turn your speakers down for, I don't know, maybe one or two minutes here. I don't have much, but um, we've got uh, the six-sided ring is still there, and that's interesting because I had heard there was a rumor earlier today that the show tonight was going to end where basically the NWO, where they tore up the script, Last night on uh, Impact, they were going to come out and uh, tear apart the ring, basically destroy it into pieces as, uh, as the show were to end tonight. But I don't have that confirmed. Nonetheless, that the, makes uh, a lot of sense, too. I didn't hear anything about that, but that sounds exactly right to me. Yeah, the uh, six sided ring is. Yeah, if we're getting uh, rid of it, that's the perfect way to do it. Have the individual go out and, like, like actually and, shoot and, and, and trash it. it. Exactly, yeah. just trash it and uh, basically rip it apart, and that would, uh, that would end up. I like it. So you'd, you'd have it. Uh, you'd have it you know, you've got the six-sided ring for the two-hour show next week, and then at the end of the show, bang, just dismantle the shit. Yeah, so it looks like the NWO is taking over and shooting and all that shit right. like they did in WCW, and they trashed it. I like it. I like it a lot. As I uh, as I noted earlier, the Young Bucks uh, debuted against the Motor City Machine Guns. That'd be a, uh, a really good match. They are now known as Generation Me. Angelina Love is uh, is sitting in the crowd right now as we speak. Don't know if there's an angle planned for later. Have they acknowledged well, uh, her, like on camera? Or? 
I don't have that. But I would assume so. They wouldn't know she's sitting in the crowd unless, you know, they put her on camera. Right. And one last note here is Bubba the Love Sponge is at the TV taping tonight, even after <laughs> saying he would not appear without a personal apology from Dixie Carter. Maybe he got it. Who knows? Maybe he got it. And speaking of Dixie Carter, she commented on last night's TNA Impact rating. And she we haven't even revealed that yet, by the way. Yes, that's it. Well, we'll do that. We'll do, you know. That's what I was saying. We should save the rating stuff after we run the shows down, because that's a big right. thing, the rating. She uh, basically, she said, thank you. Thank you for helping TNA set a record ratings in every way last night. We all won. So she's, uh, she's thrilled with last night's TNA Impact rating, which we'll talk about here in just a little bit. More TNA Impact spoilers coming up in just a little bit. ECW and SmackDown spoilers. Probably most of ECW and part of SmackDown before we go off the air. 9 o'clock Eastern Time, and then you can go over to ProWrestlingScoops.com and get the rest of the live spoilers over there. All right, back to Monday yeah, Night Raw, that, Matty Boom. Yeah, after Brett and Sean in the ring, we went backstage, and uh, the, uh, Josh Matthews went up to Vince McMahon. Uh, he asked him if he heard Brett just called him out. Because after the, the Brett and Sean thing, Brett said, all right, now we got that one taken care of. I got one more piece of business I got to put behind me. And he called out Vince, and then Vince never came. And they just faded away at the commercial. Right, we go backstage, right. and, and Josh Matthews asked Vince why he didn't go to the ring. He said he was in a meeting. He didn't hear Brett. And he said he'll come out on his own time, and he'll call out Brett later. So that was that. And there we went into, uh, obviously, we, we told the story on the Sunday special. I think we talked about it last week, too, because it happened on Tuesday last week. Was uh, Melina tore her ACL during a Tuesday, a rare uh, Raw Tuesday house show. And uh, it looks like she'll be out for six months. So they took the title off of her, and they started a, was it, eight diva tournament um so the first round matches were last night, or at least one of them was, and uh, the Maurice defeated Brie Bella of the Bella Twins uh, to advance in that tournament. Uh, from there, the Miz. No, here, I, I, let me. Uh, I, here's the thing about that, and I caught the end of that match. Is they did the uh, switcheroo thing. Yeah, on, Nikki and uh, Brie Bella. Yeah. Yeah, but I, that that made the Bella Twins look look like Stupid. shit. Yeah, like they yeah. they cheated and they still lost. You know. Yeah, they cheated and they. I mean, it made Maurice. Look like look, I mean they're pushing the shit out of her. Obviously, I would expect her to be the. Uh, she is so fucking hot. I swear to God. No, oh no. man. And speaking it's of, insane, us, you're telling me Miz is Miz is fucking around with that? I'm telling you, the real oh, Miz. Oh, oh, he is awesome, here. bro. He is awesome. Jeez. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> man, man. So, we, yeah. Uh, but after after that match, the Miz came out as she was walking up the ramp, and uh, he got in her face and like you know lovingly got in her face or egotistically got in her face and like was talking in French and you know all that crap out how she wants him and blah 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 blah. Right. So that was that. Right, and then uh, what happened next? We had uh, MVP defeated. Yeah, he said that he was Swagger. coming out. He was coming out because he was going to be on our uh, commentary for this match, which was yeah. Wow, oh, that's right. Yeah, we had uh, Miz on commentary, and then we had MVP defeated Jack Swagger and Mark Henry. Um, didn't see this one, man, so I can't really comment much. I didn't it. either. He just hit his uh, he hit the playmaker on Jack Swagger, got the pin. That's that's all I saw. So gotcha. And then we uh, I saw this, man. We had a uh, Jerry show was backstage, and uh, basically Jericho says uh, he has a plan to get back on Monday Night Raw, and he's going to go talk to Bret Hart about that. Well, first he stressed about how they couldn't lose because the main event or one of the main events was going to be DX versus uh, Jerry Show, and if Jerry Show lost, Jericho's off Raw forever. Right. And Jericho was complaining to the Big Show, saying we can't lose, blah 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 blah. And then that, that's when he said he had the plan; he wanted to go see Brett. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, and, and then, then he met up uh, with Brett backstage. You probably saw more of this than I did. I called it like right at the end. Uh, well, they said that uh, they had known each other for uh, for a long time, and then something. The end of the segment came where something about up at the dungeon. Jericho was always a crybaby or something. <laughs> yeah, like that. Jericho. Everybody knows the uh, famous Hart family dungeon. Right. In Calgary, Stu Hart would train wrestlers. He trained guys like Chris Benoit and Chris Jericho and Bret Hart and Owen Hart. And I mean, you right. could go on forever with the guys. Bunch of huge names. And Bret made fun of him and said he was always the loudest screamer in the dungeon. And it wasn't even Stu that was stretching him. It was one of Stu's little helpers or something. So he was just kind of talking shit there. But you know, other than that, it was Jericho pretty much telling Bret he knows he's lying. He doesn't. He doesn't want to make up with Sean. He still hates his guts and blah blah. blah. And Bret said no, he doesn't. And, he hates Jericho. He doesn't want to be anything like him. He thinks Jericho's a hypocrite. Blah 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 blah. So that was. You know, that. So, yeah, not only that, but he said uh, Jericho said something like tonight Bret Hart could come out and screw Sean. You've been wanting payback for years and years yeah. and years now. You could come out, man. You could cost them the titles. Bang! I'm back on Raw. It works out. And and Bret basically told him, "Go fuck yourself. Go out there and beat <laughs> yourself." You know what I mean? We had. Bad, um, I mean, I understand because Hart's a babyface. Jericho's a heel. But I, I wanted to see him get along during that promo for some reason. I don't know. I don't know why. 
Yeah, we had right. um, that, that match was next. We had uh, DX defeated Jericho. That means uh, Chris Jericho is now off Raw forever. Yep. Who knows? Who knows? We they did the big, long, drawn-out goodbye, you know, na-na-na, and all, and all that shit. So. Yeah, yeah. Then we had... Um, Actually, I did see this. A, did you see this? The Randy Orton thing? Yeah. Yeah, well, here's the thing. We've had, I mean, listen, Randy Orton's going out there and basically taking out the entire family, right? Basically booting them all. McMahon booted family. Them, yeah. yeah, basically booted them all in the head, right? And then Orton confronts Vince. Wait, back he DVT Stephanie, too, and kissed her and all that right. crap. Yeah, he did all right. that. Right. So basically, you have, a, you have a confrontation backstage between the two of those, and Orton just walks away. It's like Jesus, man. You've already beat the shit out of him numerous times. What's another time? Hell, why don't you, why don't you just kick him and, and lay him out right there, right? It seemed it seemed odd that Orton would just walk away and, and kind of take that. Where Vince basically said, "Don't don't get in my face again, or, or don't ask me." Don't yeah, ask well, what happened was Randy Orton. Again. Randy Orton wanted to. He wanted. He said Vince probably needed protection from Brett or something tonight, and he said he would be willing to kick Brett in the skull, and in return. If you make me the number 30 guy in the Royal Rumble so he gets the last entrance, we don't have to be in the match all night and he can just win it real easy at the end. He says, if you do that, I'll kick Bretton's skull and I'll be your security. And Vince said something like, he's got his own security, he doesn't need him, get out of here. Blah, blah, blah. And yeah, Randy Orton just walked off. Yeah. And then from there, Randy Orton ran into Legacy backstage. I saw this too. Legacy, it was pretty cool actually. Uh, uh, DiBiase and Rhodes got in his face and said, just like last week, we're going to be out there for your match tonight against Kofi Kingston. And if you lose, you're out of legacy, and we're going to beat the shit out of you in the ring in front of everyone. And Orton, it's kind of weird. They're like making Orton look like a, like less of. He doesn't seem like such a big deal anymore. Yeah, hey, not like, not that badass. You know that. Yeah, he's not a badass. He doesn't even seem like the leader of legacy anymore. He doesn't seem like he's a main eventer anymore. Really, that's just my opinion. Right. Yeah, yeah, and and it seemed that way last night, especially where he walked away from uh, walked away from Vince. Where at any at any other point he would have he would have just taken him out. You know what I mean? Because he's done it before. He's done it numerous times. Yeah, before. but you couldn't you couldn't kidding. that would have put a big knot in the rope because they had to have the focus the focus on Vince and Brett, not Vince and Orton. You know, and the Orton legacy right. storyline is a completely separate thing too. So I don't even know why they did it. Quite frankly, it doesn't make it doesn't. Yeah. There was no need for it. I guess he just wants the thirty number in the Royal Rumble, and they're starting. I don't know who the hell knows. But from yeah, there. Um, Okay. We had a uh, a Seamus promo. I heard this in the other room. Uh, I didn't. Just, I didn't see any of it. Well, I didn't. I didn't see it, but I heard it in the other room. You can always tell that that accent, right? Okay, Mike. Okay, or that's Australia, right? I don't know. I have uh, they all, UK, Australia, and Ireland. They all sound the same to me. I'm sorry, guys. Because okay. like our entire chat room is Irish people. I know. They're probably I know. yelling right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, guys. Probably, just, probably mm. just three of them. Jesus. Eat thing. me lucky charms. <laughs> <laughs> Oh <laughs> uh, shit! That's yeah, but anyway, yeah. Seamus promo. He was trashing Cena, and then I guess he said if Evan Bourne could beat him tonight, he'll give him a title shot at the Rumble, which led to a match between Seamus and Evan Bourne. And uh, Seamus won that pretty easily. So they, I don't know what the point of that was either. Well, uh, they well, they just squash Evan Bourne, right? It seems. That yeah, I mean, but why? Why even hint at a title shot with Evan Bourne at the Rumble if you're just going to squash him anyway? Like, why even say that? Yeah. Just say, come out here and beat him. Uh, I don't know. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Take note, Brian Danielson. Take note, right, of Evan Bourne. <laughs> oh God. I mean, or uh, that, or you could be uh, Desmond Wolf in TNA, uh, Nigel Guinness, which we'll talk about later. Which would you rather be? Because Desmond Wolf got fucking punked last night. But anyways, on Raw, they uh, did the Doctor Death Steve Williams video package. Then we had the uh, Randy Orton versus Kofi Kingston match that's been hyped up, and uh, that actually turned out to be a pretty fucking good match. Did you see any of it? Uh, I did not. This was, uh, what, Randy Orton, Kofi and Kingston. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, it was no, at the no, same yeah. time AJ Styles and Kurt Angle was on, so I don't blame yeah, you. Cause obviously, yeah. Styles Angle was the better match, but Kingston and Orton, the few times I checked in, it was it was looking really good. You know, you can't gauge a whole match if you don't see the whole match, but from what I saw, it looked like it was great, and the finish was pretty damn cool, and... But anyways, yeah, Kofi Kingston went for the Trouble in Paradise kick. Uh, Orton uh, blocked it. Like, he put his hands up to block it, and he kicked him in the hands instead. Like, you know how you block a high kick in MMA? Right. He did that, and he put his hands up. And he, so he kicked him in the hands, and his blocking, you know. So anyways, after he blocks it, he turns around, and RKO's him, gets the pin. It was it was a good match. So Randy Orton got the win there, and Legacy like, didn't need to beat him up or anything like that. So that was your main event match. And then after that, all we had left was the Bret Hart and Vince McMahon showdown in the ring, which uh, I think you said you saw, right? This was well caught bits and pieces. You'd be better. You'd be better off running it down, man. I'll just kind of comment here. I do have uh, a few more impact spoilers, but we'll save them before uh, right before we go to the break. All right. uh, so, anyways, Brett, Vince McMahon comes out and um, you know he gets in the ring and he calls out Brett and Brett comes out. 
face to face. Uh, I didn't write any notes down, but I seem to recall this wasn't much different than Brett and Sean, only with the twist at the end. It was just basically them going through their history, which everybody already knows, you know. And Vince started slowly, like he was being Mr. Nice Guy Vince at first. Well, yeah, it like, was. Wait, uh, the, the whole segment was was Vince, and, and it sounded sincere from what I from what I had heard. I mean, like I said, it was. There was one point where it looked like he was his eyes were watering up, like he was yeah, going to cry almost, too. Yeah, almost about to cry. Yeah, and basically he said uh, he said that he was going to. Uh, or did they do this? Did they do this backstage where they said uh, Stu Hart was? Gonna no, that was in the ring. That was right okay. there. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, and Brett basically uh, thanked him for that. I mean, it was sincere. You could tell that Vince was fairly sincere. And then the end of it, where he kicked him, was basically, obviously, just to uh, set up the angle. Yeah. Um, because we know that uh, Brett is signed to about two weeks after WrestleMania, um, which would take him, what, at some point into April. April, yeah. Two weeks, yeah. Uh, two weeks after WrestleMania. So it's got but most of the segment was them just going through the history, and then, like, it started to turn when Vince said he still thinks, and instead of saying Brett screwed Brett, because Brett was actually there this time for him to say it, he looked him in the eyes and said, I still think you screwed you, which was just funny to hear. And that's when wow. it started to turn a little bit, like the uh, the mood. And I don't know if anybody else got this feeling, and this is just me speculating. Like, not even speculating, just the feeling I got while watching this stuff. It was like Bret Hart, Bret Hart was like looking at Vince, almost like he was waiting for Vince to shoot on him or something. Like he was I know, waiting. I know. Like you he know, was I, like expecting Vince to just trash him and change the, like he wasn't sure if Vince was going to go with the storyline. Like, because you got to think, the last time Bret and Vince worked together, as far as, you know, storylines, was Brett getting promised one thing, and then they went out and did a complete other thing. So I, maybe it was just me because I know that history, but I had the feeling that Brett was staring at Vince like, are you really going to do what we talked about earlier, or are you going to go off script? You know, I thought the same thing. Yeah. With that, there was that look in his look eyes. In his eyes. They, yeah, they, exactly. also brought, uh, they also brought the Hart Dynasty to Monday Night Raw, and according to uh, a source, they were never planned to be used. Basically, Yeah, but apparently, Vin, Brett does, like we said earlier, Brett only knows Triple H, Sean, and Mark Henry, and he's, Definitely not friends with Triple H. He's obviously not friends with Shawn Michaels, and so he wanted some familiar, friendly faces backstage with him. And I guess that's why the Hart Dynasty was there. Now listen to uh, listen to this, man, because we've ran down Raw, and we're going to go to the break. So I think uh, we should give out. Actually, let me do these. Um, oh, real quick, real quick. What's... Brett and Vince. They, Vince raised his hand. That was that. And then they, you saw it coming a mile away. Like, are they really going to oh, yeah. do this stupid setup like that? We we can clearly see what's about to happen. No, and they did it. No. Raise his hand. They face this side of the ring. They face the other side. They go all the way around. And then Vince goes to walk off, turns around, kicks him in the nuts, and then he just walks off. Yeah. That's it. That was wrong. <laughs> that was it, man. And then uh, the show ended. They had actually requested more time than that. Not sure I was, yeah, I was thinking that. Uh, they were supposed to have a yeah. big overrun. It ended actually kind of early. It was like 11.07, 11.05. Yeah, not sure. Uh, well, it was about, I think it was about 11.09. I think it was yeah. a few minutes over or something like that. It was that. a cool ending, though, in the, in the, in the, in the regards that, like you don't you know the storyline's continuing and now you want to see what they're doing with it because you don't all you know now is that Vince is Sean is willing to put it behind him Brett's willing to put the Sean behind him but Vince is not willing to put Brett behind him so now we got to see where they're going with it which is right. I'm going to be tuned in next week to see all right, here's a couple more uh, TNA Impact spoilers. By the way, guys, that was Monday Night Raw from last night. We're going to talk TNA Impact in hour number two. A few more Impact spoilers. Turn your speakers down here for about 30 seconds while I get through these. Only got a few for you, but uh, like I said before, Angelina Love was in the crowd, and uh, she made her return to Impact. Sean Valvinas Morley is uh, now wrestling under his real name, Sean Morley, and uh, is using a new tagline, No More Hello, Ladies. Now it is, ladies, I'm here. We've got uh, Sean Morley on on TNA. Alrighty. And uh, announced for the TNA Genesis pay-per-view is Scott Hall and Kevin Nash, the Outsiders, versus Beer Money, Inc. So that Actually, is, uh, we got more matches for that. Uh, they're going to do um, the British Invasion defending the tag titles against Hernandez and Matt Morgan. That was actually announced last night. I didn't catch it, but it was. Okay. And uh, they're still going to be doing AJ Styles versus Kurt Angle for the world title at the Genesis, even though they put it on last night. Apparently, that'll right. be explained tonight, I guess, on the taping. So now let me um, let's do the ratings. We've got one minute left. Here are the ratings. TNA Impact last night drew a. I don't have a drum roll. Sorry. Well, I was going to let you do it. TNA oh, yeah, Impact they... last night drew a. One point five. One point five. Yes. WWE Raw last night drew a. That I don't remember. 3.37? 3.37, right. So yeah. 3.4. 3.4. Um, 
here's the gist of it, guys. I Come on, man, let's, break, little... let's break the ratings down after the break, because i got a lot to say All about right. that, actually. All right, no doubt. We'll do it after the break. No doubt. We're, uh, we're going to take a break right now, guys. We're at the top of the hour, 8 o'clock Eastern Time. We're going to be here for one more hour, leading you into ECW, 10 o'clock Eastern Time tonight. We'll be here until 9 o'clock. We'll one more hour to go. Bring it down. TNA Impact from last night when we come back to the break. Ratings, TNA Impact, and Monday Night Raw. Um, lots of all this stuff, your live phone calls, live chat room, WZRonline.com slash chat. You're listening. To and we're back, WZR Radio, here on WZRonline.com. I'm Ryan Clark. He's Matt Boone. Matt B, we're here. I'm still Matt Boone, yes. Was I, uh, was I supposed to go there or not? I did you get, uh, well, the, the, the ending fades out for literally like 40 seconds, so you could come in whenever you want on that. Uh, right, I didn't hear the music going, that's why. Oh, I you didn't? Know. Okay. I don't okay. Right, no idea. All right, so before we went to the break, um, we talked about the ratings for last night. We had TNA Impact did a 1.5, WWE Raw did a 3.37, which is obviously rounded up to a 3.4. So 1.5 versus 3.4. The, uh, I've got a little bit more info. Do you have something to say before I get to it or no? Go ahead. You got more ratings info? Yeah, the more. Yeah, do uh, that, and then we'll do- we'll talk about the we'll break the numbers down. All right. Uh, the first hour of TNA Impact drew a 1.7 rating. Like I like we said, guys, the overall rating. You've got to factor. There's three hours here. You know what I mean? So it's 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 kind of hard to judge ratings with a three hour show compared to WWE's two hour show because you're taking three hours, you know, adding the three hours up and then dividing it by three, whereas WWE it's got its advantages and disadvantages, though, because you got the hour to, to hook them and keep them for the second and third hour, whereas if it was just two hours straight on head-to-head, you might lose a lot more because you don't have time to get the early lead in and, and get the people right. hooked and wanting to stay. Right, so we had a, a 1.7 for the first hour, and then we had a quarter hour to open hour number two, which would have been Hulk Hogan's debut. So you would have had Hulk Hogan on... TNA at this point, and Bret Hart on Monday Night Raw, and they drew a 1.88, which is rounded up to a 1.9 in that quarter hour. So basically, in hour number one, you drew a 1.7. You went to hour number two, where Bret Hart was over on Raw, and you raised. So it wasn't like Bret Hart was on Monday Night Raw and TNA tanked. They kept their audience throughout the entire show, which is excellent news because obviously they had that 8 to 9 hour where there was no competition then you had the competition where it was 9 to 11 and that's where it got scary for TNA because were people going to tune out and, and tune off their program go over to Monday Night Raw for Bret Hart and it's interesting that they drew a two, uh, 1.9 in that quarter hour to open hour number 2 and then we had basically with 1.9 so it was rounded up to a 1.9 so 1.9 versus Brett is is unbelievable. I mean, that's that was, nothing to sneeze at, 